All right, here we go. Chat, today is Friday, February 16th, and we got a little bit of news, I think, I hope. Uh, Guild Wars 2 on their main channel did a broadcast today that is supposed to be related to, well, I'll just read the title, March Balance Preview and New Weapon Proficiencies Update. Now, I don't know what is in here that we have not already seen, um, and I don't know, I don't know, like, what's new and what's repeat. So we're just gonna take it from the beginning, but because we're watching it after it went live, we have the power of fast forward, which is a great power. Uh, so let me, uh, make a few changes here, just a second, just a second. Let me get a good view. Uh, right now this is cropped for YouTube. So we are, you know what, let's do, let's do theater mode. <laughs> and, nope, that's not it. Hold on. There we go. Lovely, 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 lovely. Okay. All right. Uh, and it looks like they've got 10 minutes of just nothing at the beginning. So skip but, ahead, skip uh, ahead. We didn't do ahead. a stream for Jay. Oh, there we go. All right, and 30 seconds. Okay, let's see what they've got for us. And I usually would watch this on 2x speed, but I'll do 1.5 for now. All right, welcome everybody back to another episode of Two Sweatshirts and One T-Shirt. My name is Roy, Roy Marks, and I'm joined today by none other than Cal CMC Cohen and Taylor Trigg Brooks. Gentlemen, hope you're doing well today. How goes it? Wait, I can't read our titles. Can you uh, say what the titles are right now? Nope. Okay, unfortunate. Uh, yeah. Closeted NG Main, Professor of Yapology, Professional Role Player. Yeah, well, we're back. You know, it's been a while. We, when was the last stream? It was like last year, right? Yeah, last year wasn't that long ago, to be fair, That's but uh, it's been a little bit. Uh, we didn't do a stream for January, as we mentioned in the blog post, or the forum post at the time. It was like, just a bunch of small changes. I don't think anyone wants to, you know, sit in the chat and watch us read, hey, we nerfed this number because it's too high, and we increased this number because it's too low. But, you know, maybe they do. So feel free to give that feedback as part of this, uh, this stream feedback. <laughs> uh, Taylor, how are you today? Uh, doing pretty good. Already couldn't hear Cal for like five seconds. Uh, nice. That's going well. Um, nice. Ready to do the stream. So uh, something something on your guys' ends really, not mine, um, because everything I do is flawless. Um, yes. Uh, as... Outside information. Uh, a good time to remind you guys that the last time they did a broadcast, Roy accidentally muted everybody else, so the recording of it was just him talking and then occasionally them going, while you just listen to him like breathe for an hour. But yeah, everything he does is flawless. There's a typo in one of the uh, titles. Well, fortunately, we're going to swap over to the PowerPoint notes uh, and not worry okay. about that typo. So that's good. Whoever set those up must have been in a rush this morning or something. Um, anyways, uh, we are going to be talking about uh, not only the balance preview notes for the next upcoming balance patch in March, uh, but we also are going to be talking about the updates uh, we've been doing for the Cure 2 weapons. Uh, there's a blog post released uh, this week that went over that, uh, but we'll be showing off a couple of them and talking about them a little bit more um, today on the stream. Um, very, very well-written blog post, if I do say so myself. Uh, we haven't yet figured <laughs> out who wrote it, but maybe they'll show up at some point. Well, they may have introduced themselves in the blog post. Oh. Pretty good wordsmith, if anyone. You yeah. know, obviously, I'll take credit for assigning the task to Taylor, um, but he may have to write more blogs in the future, because he did too good of a job. Yeah, I think it was Taylor that wrote Indeed. it. Um, as always, <clears throat> the post, uh, the forum post, excuse me, will be coming up after the end of the stream, with all the notes that you'll be seeing here today. Uh, and then also, uh, at the end of the stream, um, or after the stream, I should say, we'll actually be heading over to be doing a little bit of a podcast on twitch.tv slash jebrounity, so one of our arena partners, uh, who will be discussing the QR2 uh, weapon updates uh, with us a little bit after the stream ends. Uh, so make sure to check that out. Um, other than that, I guess we can just jump right into it. Oh, right, shoot. Sounds, sounds Hold on a sec. They did a follow-up there. I didn't know about that. Uh, hold on. Twitch.tv slash JebroUnity. And let's go to videos. And let's see. Recent broadcasts. Uh, interview featuring CMC, Trig, and Roy from ArenaNet. Uh... Oh god, this is 90 minutes long. Oh boy. <laughs> I don't know if I got energy for three hours of this. You we'll guys, see. Right, let's do it. What a winning endorsement from Cal. We're gonna start off with Elementalist, and this is of course gonna be Cal's realm. So uh, we got a couple of sword improvements. We've got a arcane skills rework and some support tempest heal buffs, which Cal will be talking about here. Uh yes, obviously starting with the most important sword buff to water trident. Um but you know, who organized these notes as well? Oh, I forgot to say something actually at the start of the stream that I was water gonna say. Trident's not so sword. we'll get around right to this in a second. I didn't say anything. Um <laughs> I, you know, I just feel obligated to say that we get this feedback basically every time. I see it on social media every time. But Roy and I do not hate each other. <laughs> and all of the people on this call are actually really good friends. We've said this, we've said this every time. And, stream. you know, there might be a little bit of playful ribbing. And, you know, so we just like to have fun on the stream. But believe it or not, I'm forced there to be are here. No, there's no bad choice. blood on the stream. Yeah, we, we like to have fun. <laughs> we like to have fun here. Who on earth thought they hated each other to the point that they went and made forum posts? There might be, like, some feigned outrage just for comedic value. But, uh... 
know, we don't take ourselves too seriously. Just wanted to throw that out because I'm pretty sure I've seen that like the last five. Thank years, you, Avery. Someone always says, "Man, I, I can't believe Roy and Cal just hate each other See, so much." The, pro they keep doing this. the problem is that I'm extremely sarcastic and Cal is extremely dry, and so I think those two clash, and, and you know, seems like we, yeah. But yeah, all okay. Right, anyway, that was that was great. Great Cal. Yes. Thanks, thanks so much. That, for that was not planned at all, of course. <laughs> Anyways, whoa, that was uh, we haven't seen before. Yes. So Water tried it, getting a nice buff. Um, you know, first... yeah, I feel bad, you know, for Taylor having to sit there between two people who just hate each other so badly. That's got to be really awkward. Chair, especially Catalyst, was something that was fairly dominant for a while, but we brought it down a bit. It's maybe a little bit under where we'd like to see right now, so a little bit to water and see if that brings it back to where we want it to be. Uh, and then we do have a few, you know, more minor improvements to sword, but they are hopefully going to be somewhat impactful. We see Earth and Vortex getting a slight cooldown reduction, so more evasion there, a little bit extra mobility with the Polar Cleave change, Rust Frenzy being able to move, maybe just a lot more opportunity to strike your enemies with a skill that is pretty powerful, you know, a lot of bleeding, a lot of damage on that skill. Absolutely. We move to the uh, also, All right, so like, hold on a sec. So Water Trident, power coefficient is being increased uh, by from 1.0 to 1.25 in PvP World v. World. Updraft fixed an issue that caused the skill to display a warning area for allies. Flame Uprising fixed an issue that caused the skill to inflict less burning than intended in competitive. Polaric Leap reduced the cooldown from 15 seconds to 12 in competitive. Earthen Vortex reduced the cooldown from 18 seconds to 15 in competitive. And Rust Frenzy Players can all move while casting this. A lot more opportunity to strike your enemies with a skill that is pretty powerful. You know, a lot of bleeding, a lot of damage on that skill. Absolutely. We move to the arcane uh, also, stuff. yeah, we've made some changes to arcane skills. Um, this is something that's kind of been on our backlog for a while. All right, so arcane brilliance. The skill now grants additional healing when finishes a combo. Arcane power. The skill no longer grants bonuses to allies. The skill now grants a flat amount of ferocity for five seconds instead of the ferocity bonus being linked to critical strike stacks. Reduce the cooldown from 35 seconds to 30. And Arcane Wave now leaps to the targeted area before dealing damage and now dazes enemies that it strikes. Reduced range from 900 to 600. Reduced attack radius from 360 to 240. Increased power coefficient from 0.6 to 1.7, so almost triple what it was, in PvP and World v. World. Reduced ammo recharge time from 30 seconds to 25 in PvE. Well, because... Uh, we don't feel that arcane skills have like the best identity as like hey these are all skills that are just instant and two of them do damage in very similar ways one of them is projectile one is an aoe but we wanted to get a little bit more uh different feeling to some of the arcane skills and really flesh out the skill types so we're going to see some to the skills so we're going to see change to the trait as well uh the big note here is probably to change to arcane wave instead of just being like you know a long range large circle instant damage it is not going to actually be a leap so you're going to leap similar to like the earthshaker animation you know leap smash some element some arcane energy into the ground and do some damage do some days this gives us a chance to you know bump up the damage a little bit more increase the impact of the skill because it is now going to have a cast time it is going to have that counterplay that it currently doesn't have uh brilliant's gonna get a little bit of extra healing if you finish a combo with it doesn't care what combo so you know you finish a fire field get a little bit of extra healing seems cool uh arcane power We've retooled this a little bit. It's not going to do the thing where it shares arcane power anymore, but it's also not going to have its ferocity bonus tied to the critical hit stacks. It was just a really weird interaction. All right, so Elemental Surge, this trait was renamed Arcane Lightning. This trait no longer causes arcane skills to inflict conditions and instead enhances arcane skills in this way. Arcane Brilliance grants prot to the user. Arcane Wave immobilizes enemies it strikes. Arcane Shield grants stability to the user when the shield expires. Arcane Power grants additional crit strike stacks to the user. And Arcane Blast blinds enemies that it strikes where each time you hit, you would steal less and less bonus damage. So now it's just going to give you a flat ferocity bonus and then give you critical strike stacks that are independent of that ferocity bonus. Uh, moving into the rework to Elemental Surge, we're just changing back to Arcane Lightning. That was kind of a disconnect when traits got merged together and the ferocity bonus called Arcane Lightning. Uh, Nikolai says you're aware that there are forum posts as well. Here's a link if you want. Yes, yeah, I did have this in one of my tabs, but uh, yeah, I'll actually, you know what, I'll paste it into the other chat as well just so everybody can see it. It's a good idea. Uh, where were we? Here. The trace called Elemental Surge, and it's very confusing. Not really confusing, but it's not doing anything uh, element-related anymore, so we just have to name Arcane Lightning. Still going to give you the Frost bonus, but now it's just going to empower each of the Arcane skills individually instead of having the same condition bonus that's based on your attunement. Uh, this is something that didn't necessarily feel like it made as much sense with, like, Brilliance and Shield, especially the defensive ones. Um, but also, the instant emote was very unhealthy, and it didn't get used a whole lot, but every time we saw it, it's like, this is not something we actually want in the game. So now that's going to be specifically tied to the new Arcane Wave, which has the cast time. It's still going to have that emote. Uh, Blast is going to have the blind. Arcane Power will give you some extra stacks of that buff. Arcane Brilliance will give you protection. And the big one here, Arcane Shield, will give you some stability when you use it if you have this trait equipped. Yeah. Uh, do we see a lot of these skills, you know, with these reworks kind of becoming uh, more present in the meta? Do we see some of these skills already being present in the meta? Uh, is this just something we're going to keep an eye on now that a lot of these skills got adjustments? Yeah, you know, we see Arcane Blast in PvE just for the damage a lot. And Arcane Shield gets some play in competitive modes already. I'd expect Arcane Wave to be a little more exciting coming out of this change with the, like, the movement aspect, the days. Uh, maybe emo if you go for the trait. It's obviously hard to take that trait when you're competing with the base of Arcana, but maybe there's a cool build to place like a bunch of Arcane skills and really wants that trait. I feel like Arcane, uh, Arcane Wave Brilliant, should be maybe renamed to like Arcane Leap or something with the new, you know, how it's going to work now. Like this has always been a pretty low cooldown skill. It's obviously not signature restoration. 
but now it's going to give you like even more healing on top if you finish a combo. So if you finish a water field with this, even if you don't hit anyone, that's going to be a pretty decent heal. And if you have the trade, it'll give you some prod as well. So, you know, hopefully, it's always it's always hopefully because it's hard to guarantee anything unless we made the numbers insane for the sake of making them insane, which we don't want to do. Absolutely. All right, that uh, just about, I believe, wraps up the arcane work there. Yep, so we got a couple other changes here for Core. Uh, one with air increased the super speed duration from one and a half to three seconds in PvP. This trait still grants a reduced super speed duration in PvP when fresh air is equipped. Aquamancer training increased the outgoing healing modifier from 15 to 20%. Uh, one with air is something we nerfed a long time ago in PvP, specifically for the fresh air build, uh, because obviously you get a lot more triggers of this when you have fresh air equipped. We're basically reverting the nerf for non fresh air builds. So if you're taking lightning rod, if you're taking bolt of the heart, you'll now get the full, the old full version of one with air. Uh, this is and fresh air build. Did it hurt your feelings? And a nice little bump to healing, outgoing healing modifier in the water trait line, 15 to 20. You know, just give a little extra healing to support Tempest builds. Yeah. And uh, speaking of that, Taylor, if you want to talk a little bit about the Tempest buffs we've got here. All right, so Tempest and Weaver. Wash the pain away, uh, which is the Tempest heal. Reduce the radius of the first pulse, uh, sorry, increase the radius of first pulse from 180 to 240, and radius of the second pulse from 240 to 360. Lucid Singularity, this trait now applies Might instead of Alacrity in PvP and World v. World. Uh, Elemental Bastion, increase the healing coefficient from 0.8 to 1.0 in World v. World only. And Bolstered Elements now causes stances to grant protection instead of barrier. As well as a weaver. Yeah, Tempest okay. is getting some adjustments. Um, so the big one you're going to see here is Lucid Singularity is no longer going to give Alacrity in competitive modes. Um, this is something you're going to see often through these notes. Um, back last year in the June patch, we increased Alacrity application to a lot of classes, and it made its way into competitive modes. And especially for World vs. World, we're not really happy to see the state of that boon in that game mode. It's kind of gotten out of control. We don't want it to be something that's so easily um, achieved. And so you're going to see it being taken away from a lot of classes that got it then. Um, but as for other parts of this, uh, Wash the Pain Away is getting um, some usability improvements to match other healing. <laughs> They're like, all right, children, here's Alacrity. Play nice. Let's see what happens. Oh, God! Give it back! <laughs> um, like, ally heal, heal skills, um, and just to bump up to Elemental Bastion. That's the last six months kind of summarized. Losing singularity, losing its strength. We don't expect these changes to be, like, insane for Tempest, but we do want to give it a nudge in the right direction. Um, and lastly here, we see Bolstered Elements um, is becoming protection instead of barrier to be a more active defense option um, to hopefully, you know, absorb more damage than the barrier would have if used it in the right place. Absolutely. Very cool. Uh, you, you kind of mentioned a little bit that, uh, you know, this is more of a nudge for, for support Tempest. Um, are we expecting this to sort of put it in a better place in the meta? Are we expecting it to potentially need some more? Again, is this just something we're going to keep an eye on for the future? Yeah, we're definitely going to keep an eye on it. There are other supports getting adjustments, um, mostly downward adjustments this patch, and so we want to see how Tempest competes with them um, and how everything shakes out before we give it bigger uh, buffs. Makes sense. All right, it's going to wrap up Elementalist. Uh, so we'll be moving on to Engineer. Uh, we're going to see some updates to the Inventions, trait line, um, some power... Uh, real quick, hang on. I'm seeing some folks ask for the notes. Uh, I am going to do this the lazy way and i'm going to pin them uh in each of the two chats there we go all right uh engineer inventions update uh pve power hollow smith buffs and kit and weapon quality of life our hollow smith buffs in pv specifically and some kit and weapon quality of life adjustments uh taylor you want to read this first slide okay uh slide? yeah all right G engineer glue shot which i believe is pistol five increase the cooldown from 12 to 20 seconds in pve only Increase the power coefficient from 1.5 to 2.5 in PvE only. Uh, wait, what? The power coefficient? Does that do down? Does that do damage? I thought that just made the big glue puddle on the ground. Coat the area with the glue. Yeah, it is pistol five. It mobilizes. I guess okay. So it does a little bit of damage on impact. Very small amount of damage. But okay, it does do some damage. Let's see. So, uh, engineer, Wonderbus, um, kind reduce of reduce the cooldown from eight seconds to six seconds in PvP. That's I patrons. Uh, that is what is that? Rifle three, I think. Uh, it's rifle two or three. Uh, jump shot, reduce the cooldown from eighteen seconds to sixteen seconds PvP. That's rifle five. Uh, Gleam saber, uh, reduce the cooldown reduction from three seconds to one. Refraction cutter, reduce cooldown for, uh, from nine seconds to six in PvE. And Radiant Arc, reduce the cooldown from 14 seconds to 12 in PvE. Increase the power coefficient from 1.8 to 2.5 in PvE. Okay, so Hollowsmith uh, uh, Laser Sword is getting some buffs. And the Rifle in PvP is getting some buffs. And then this really weird line about Glue Shot. Eclectic things on the slide. Um, glue Shot is word, part of us. What? Oh, what? Eclectic. Eclectic. Oh, yeah, sorry. I thought you said it was muted. Um, Taylor's been doing a lot of New York Times games, so he's really working on that vocabulary. That's true. True. 
Um, flu shot didn't really land where we wanted it to when we buffed it as part of the whole power offhand pistol thing. Um, and so we're increasing the cooldown, but proportionally increasing the damage. So hopefully it's easier to fit it into a rotation. And, you know, 20 seconds is that magic number to proc fireworks that everyone loves. Um, and then skipping to the bottom, we see some sword reworks. Um, I feel like too much of its power budget was put into the cooldown reset and made it so all you wanted to do was auto attack so you could get, like, you know, more cooldowns. Um, so we're shifting that off and then just base DDRing some of it. So hopefully you spend less time auto attacking and more time using other skills. Um, and then we see some slight cooldown shapes for rifle and PvP. Very cool. Got more uh, um, sort of core NG. Med Bla Oh my god, finally! Okay. Med Blaster. This skill can now auto-attack allies. Increase the angle of the skill. Alright, so, uh, I, obviously I spent over a year maining uh, heal uh, NG, partly scrapper and then partly mech. Um, med Blaster, which is the, uh, you equip the med kit, it's your one skill. It can only auto-attack an enemy, but it doesn't do damage. <laughs> If, any of a, if anyone's never played Engineer Healer and you're like, what's the big deal here? Just know that you have to auto enemies, but it doesn't do damage. You'd be like, wow, that's kind of stupid. Yes, it is. Uh, so if you can, you know, target an enemy and then be have your team between you and the enemy and auto so it hits them, that's fine. Uh, or you have to turn and face the people that need it and then just hit the one key repeatedly or hold it down. Uh, so this is just a nice quality. This doesn't, you know, make it any more powerful, but a nice quality of life. Increase the angle. I'm guessing you know, it was like a narrow cone before. I'm guessing it's just going to be wider now. Um, bandage Blast was completely reworked a few months ago. Increase the missile velocity and angle of the skill. Fixed an issue that caused multiple angles to be incorrect when shooting at full health allies. Uh, infusion Bomb fixed an issue that caused the boons from the skill to be lower duration than intended in PvE. And Grenade Barrage fixed an issue that prevented this skill from triggering Relic of the Fireworks. Changes here, mostly aimed at the kits. You yep, uh, these are all pretty much just quality of life improvements. Med Blaster, you can now auto attack allies with it, like other healing autos. Bandage Blast, after we changed it, it was a bit clunky to actually, you know, hit people with it. So we're increasing the hitbox of it and then the missile velocity and everything. So fetch it all, make the skill feel better to use. Um, and then Grenade Barrage had a bug where it didn't proc Relic of Fireworks. And so for power based um, engineer builds and PvE, that was kind of annoying. So we fixed it. Very good. Another slide here. This is going to be some inventions reworks. Cal, if you want to talk about these. All right, so automated medical response. This trait has been reworked. Uh, grant regeneration to nearby allies when using your healing skills tool belt skill. Uh, hang on just a second. Automated medical response. Where was that? Um, that one. What does it currently do? I need a reminder. Uh, currently it is heal skills are recharged when you are struck when below 25% life. Two minute cooldown. And then they are changing it to grant regen to allies when you use your healing skills tool belt skill. Now, if you care about giving your allies regen, you're probably a healing engineer. If you're a healing engineer, you're probably using medkit. If you're using medkit, your healing skills tool belt skill is your heal skill, bandage self, your F1. So that will now you know, apply regen to allies. I kind of, I, I don't know, that's that's all right. I love hate that. There was a period in the past where you had to spam your self-heal on cooldown just to give allies quickness, and it was awful because you never had your self-heal for when you actually needed it to heal. Um, but Engineer also has other ways of providing regen, so this is kind of just icing on the cake. It's not like this is their only way of uh, applying regen. So I think this is fine. Because, um, like, uh, Mace 2, for example, uh, applies regen. Um... Excuse me. Mecha legs has been reworked. Gain resistance on dodge. Uh, I believe mecha legs was before it gave you a free, essentially, um, movement speed increase. Well, I say free, but in, in return for like a, a trait. Uh, where was... What does mecha legs do right now? Yes. 25% uh, movement speed increase all the time and reduced duration of chill, cripple, and immobilize on you. So they're taking that away. I hate it. Uh, they recently took away Natural Stride from Druids, which was the same thing as this. Uh, and now they're taking away the movement speed from that. I really do not like that. Because um, there are some classes, like uh, Willbender has like a free movement speed just baked into its traits. But, hmm. All right, I'm curious how much resistance we'll get on dodge. Uh, I, I'm guessing it's just going to be a second or two, but we'll see. Bunker down. This trait now triggers when disabling an enemy instead of when critically striking. Then mine now spawns at the enemy location instead of near the player. Reduce the internal cooldown from 4 seconds to 1 second. Increase the mine power coefficient from 0.77 to 0.95. 
The bandage now clears a condition, and its base healing has been increased from 502 to 598. Uh, bunker down, if memory serves, uh, is a trait that when you uh, critically hit with an attack, yeah, you spawn a medkit and a mine on the ground. The mine would do a tiny bit of damage, the medkit would do a tiny bit of healing if an ally walked over it. So they're trying to make that be a bit more attractive. Sure, yep. uh, definitely some improvements to the invention straight line. You know, there's some traits that aren't super good and some traits that we don't really want to be good. Bunker down is one of those. A uh, trait that we kind of nerfed significantly in the past, especially in competitive modes, just due to the trigger being so easy. It's like every time you critically strike, you would do this, which is a bit too free. So we shifted it to be on disable. Any health on CC will trigger bunker down now, uh, which gives a little bit more room to make it more powerful. So reducing the cooldown, increasing the mind damage, increasing the bandage healing, Hondi cleanse on that bandage now. It should be a bit more, a bit closer to where we'd like to see like these Cray Master uh, traits and especially like the gameplay around them. Uh, Mecha Legs also getting a pretty significant rework here, just getting the resistance on dodge trait that we, you know, we gave that to Warrior uh, in a previous update, and it's. It definitely feels good with the right value for like these builds that are a little bit looking to be a little bit more tanky, a little bit more defensive. Having access to that resistance on dodge, pretty solid trigger. And Mecha Legs is kind of a trait that wasn't super useful anymore. Uh, it's kind of you know a bit dated at this point in time. Uh, automated med medical response, kind of similar. <laughs> that shows how bad I am. I'm like, man, I love this trait. He's like, it's not super useful anymore, so we're changing it. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Another trait where I guess I'm doing it wrong. Really high because the effect is kind of you know very powerful but also very passive. Uh, we've reviewed a lot of those traits in the past. So this is similarly, just getting an extra regen trigger to play into like the Grandmaster Miner that cares me of regen. Is uh, Inventions a specialization we were seeing play, and this is kind of just a, a way to make it feel a little better to take, or is this kind of trying to get it more, uh, see more play in, in different modes? Yeah, I mean, you definitely see a little bit of Inventions. Obviously, like the uh, the prop trait is kind of the best one where you can support builds will take it to the Clemson prod application. But as for like, we've seen maybe a little bit less of like the bruisery builds that play Inventions, and they do exist still, you know, Prod Hollow somewhere in the, the Mist Center. But uh, Bunker okay. Down especially was just like not a, not a trait that saw a lot of play, so we saw this as an avenue to rework Yeah, I can't think of any build play. that I ever played with NG that Very used cool. Bunker Down. All right, here are the aforementioned Hollow Smith buffs in uh, PvE. Just... All right, so uh, these are all PvE. Laser Disc increased damage bonus when above 100% heat from 10 to 50%. 10 to 50! Blade Burst reduced the cooldown from 30 seconds down to 20. Photon Wall reduced cooldown from 35 to 25. Launch wall increase the damage uh, increase when above 100% heat from 10 to 50 again. Just getting some of those numbers up. Make a joke of those. Nothing too crazy. Yeah. Yeah. The main, reduce cooldown. the main goal of this is we want to push Power Hollow Smith to take the uh, ECSU and enhanced capacity storage unit traits um, as their grandmaster instead of the overheat. And so we're really trying to crank in the bonuses for the 100% heat. Um, so you know exceed skills or what you want to use for that build. Yeah. That's yeah. I Pretty straightforward. Say exactly what you said. Makes sense. Yeah. Got more Hollow Smith notes mm -hmm. as well as one for Mechanist, which is a. Uh, Particle Accelerator increased the power coefficient from 0.7 to 1.0 in PvE and increased the damage increase when above 100% from 20% to 50% in PvE. So again, another huge buff if you are above 100% heat. Prismatic Converter, this trait now triggers when swapping from Photon Forge to a kit. Solar Focusing Lens, this trait now triggers when swapping from Photon Forge to a kit. And Mechanical Genius reduced the recharge penalty for mech command skills when far away from the mech from 50% to 20%. Uh, so Mechanical Genius is... I mean, I really don't like it. Uh, mechanical Genius basically makes it to where if your uh, mech is uh, more than a certain distance from you, it gets really stupid. And Ranger pets don't have that. Now, granted, there's not many content where you should be split up, but it feels weird, like, if you're a little bit too far from your mech and it uses one of its abilities, that ability goes on a much longer cooldown. Now, they're reducing the penalty there, but it does still exist. I think that whole... The, f the fact that it exists, I think, is stupid. I don't think it makes for fun gameplay. It's just a, a punishment if you're not stacked on your mech, which is weird. And that we've seen in the past, I believe. Potentially. Possibly. Somewhere. Cam? Taylor? Uh, yeah, uh, so these Did are kind of going along with, these are uh, going along with it, the particle accelerator, and then there's two um, adapt tier traits for Hollowsmith that they worked when you press the F5 to leave Forge, but if you pressed a kit instead, you wouldn't get their bonuses, which is very confusing and not how it should work. So it's working now that when you leave Forge, no matter what way, you're going to get their bonuses. Um, and Mechanical Genius, we wanted to see um, what happens when we make the penalty not as big. Um, we know that it's a minor pain point, and so we're kind of lessening it. Very good. That'll wrap up our engineer notes. We're going to move on to Guardian. Um, with all right, so Guardian says underutilized utility buffs and core and willbender trait improvements. Which was, you know, almost a little bit of a struggle because we didn't have Firebrand PvP buffs uh, to talk about this time. Right? Wow, you stole my joke. That's oh, crazy. Oh, no, I'm kidding. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. Cal, anything, any thoughts on Firebrand, uh, Guardian for this patch? Nope. Not anymore. Taylor? <laughs> well, anyways, oh, no. we're going to be looking at Excuse some uh, buffs to some underutilized utility skills as well as some core and willbender trait improvements uh, for Guardian here in this patch. Uh, and Cal, why don't, you, why don't you talk about what's on this page? All right, so uh, what is on this page? Feel My Wrath now grants super speed in addition to other effects. 
Are you kidding me? <laughs> Feel My Wrath already does so much. Where is it? It already gives fury and quickness. And, and they're throwing super speed on top of that. All right, I'm surprised by that. That seems a bit much. Uh, vigorous Precision now triggers when dodging instead of when critically striking and no longer has an internal cooldown. Reduced Vigor Duration from 5 seconds to 3 seconds. Okay. Focus Mastery. Protection from this trait will now apply when Shield of Wrath expires instead of when it activates. Redemption. Increase the duration of Lesser Litany of Wrath from 3 to 4 seconds. Uh, Glacial Heart. This trait no longer chills and damages enemies that you disable and instead heals the user when disabling, immobilizing, or chilling an enemy. Zealot's Defense. You can now move while using this skill. Adjusted the projectile behavior to interact better with gaps in terrain. Sure. Yeah, you know, uh, Feel My Wrath. Maybe it's a new firebrand. We can buff it every patch. Thank you, Nyron uh, and Nog. Obviously, Renewed Focus is a pretty good skill, so it's difficult to take other skills, especially in competitive mode. Feel My Wrath is pretty useful to give quickness in PD. Um, so we are kind of looking for ways to give reasons to play it. You know, obviously, Renewed Focus is always going to be Renewed Focus, but maybe Feel My Wrath, you know, it's going to quickness, super speed. Is it good enough yet? Probably not, but you know, we can buff it next patch. Yeah, Taylor's shaking his head. You know, probably all <laughs> is. But super speed is like interesting enough that we're like, hey, let's try this out. Um, and see what happens. We'll revisit as needed. A uh, couple of minor trait mechanical mechanical shufflings. Uh, focus mastery, this is a pretty minor note, but you know now it's going to give you protection when sh uh, Shield of Wrath ends, as opposed to when it activates, because you'll be blocking attacks while the protection is active. So nice minor quality of life improvement. Uh, vigorous precision, shifting to on dodge trigger instead of on crit trigger. This just felt like something that was a bit more uh, natural for the trait line that was in. And Probably doesn't have too significant of an impact. We still want straight to be good. We still want to be valuable and usable for like support builds, especially. Uh, but now you won't even have to worry about like swinging your sword or throwing something from your staff or whatever. I'm just rambling at this point. Um, good stuff. You can just dodge. You know, as you're dodging to heal people, you can get some bigger. Very cool. That's awesome. Uh, Glacial Heart. This is another trait that is kind of underutilized, or, and we kind of decided to rework a little bit. So it's still going to give you glacial blow, but instead of doing like the extra damage and chill trigger, it's not going to heal you when you disable, immobilize, or chill an enemy. Kind of trying to lean a little bit more into that bruiser style of gameplay. Obviously, the hammer has like good burst potential, but it's it's supposed to be a little bit more of that bruiser weapon with like the CC skills. You know, you got the ring, you got immob, you got some banish stuff. So maybe the heal makes it a little bit more appealing. Obviously, it competes with two really strong traits. But we're going to see how that one goes. And Zealous Defense, you can now move. Very cool. We've been kind of updating a lot of skills. Very cool. With this behavior, and Zealous Defense was definitely one that we saw for this patch, where the skill would just be a lot better if you could move, and we don't think it'll be too problematic. Very cool. I can't wait to press R3 and move. Very excited. Uh, Taylor, why don't you walk? All right. Roiling Light reduced the roll duration from 0.75 to 0.5 seconds. The roll distance is unchanged. Flash Combo, you now gain access to Repose as long as you complete the skill, even if you do not land all five hits. Repose, the skill is no longer an attack. This skill now heals and removes conditions from you after Shadow stepping back to your original position. Heaven's Palm now evades attacks and finishes your targeted foe if they are downed and no other enemies are nearby. Huh. So it's kind of like the Daredevil Elite that you can use to just finish people that are down state, but under the condition that no one else is nearby. You don't want other people to see. Deathless Courage. This trait no longer removes Aegis from Courage triggers. Reduces the duration of Courage, or cause enemy deaths to increase the duration of Courage. This trait now grants the Guardian strike damage and condition damage reduction while Courage is active. Walk us through what's going on with Willbender. Yeah, Willbender. Um, kind of uh, doing some light adjustments to physical skills to help improve their playability. A lot of them, outside of Whirling, are still not really the best. Um, so Whirling Light um, is hopefully getting its recovery time. You know, you can use it and still keep attacking. Um, Flash combo, you're going to gain access to Repose even if you don't land all five hits. And as well, Repose is no longer going to be a damaging skill. It's now going to be defensive, healing and removing conditions to you. Um, and then kind of go in a bit crazy on Heaven's Palm. It's now going to evade you, and if it will finish your target if they are downed, and it's the only person in the radius. So, you know, kind of single something else. One shot them, finish them, Will Bender stuff, crazy. Will um, Bender Deathless stuff. Courage, also a trait that didn't really hit the mark, trying to be what it wanted to be. So we kind of completely reworked it, and now it's going to be just more consistent damage reduction. Um, to help something else I just realized, the fact that Heaven's Palm is an evade, and if your enemy's alone, that means if your enemy is on the ground, even if they have their downstate interrupt, like a hammer throw on a warrior or you know, thunderclap on ranger, if you do Heaven's Palm, they cannot stop you. Like a ranger, usually maybe they've got a, like a wolf pet and they can interrupt you once with that. And then thunderclap, they can interrupt you a second time from downstate and they can buy a bit of time. If Heaven's Palm, they are evading and stomping you at the same time, 
they're just gone. <laughs> like that, they're ju they're just gone. They they can't do anything about it. So if you're downstate by a few more seconds, skill is CC. It's useless versus Willbenders with that use Heaven's Palm. Uh, it's like Necro Fear, uh, for example. Now the the ones that move you, uh, Thief, Teleport, Mesmer, uh, Elementalist, those three, Heaven's Palm wouldn't be as good on those because they could poof out of it. But the other six classes, their downstate couldn't buy any time. They would just die. You stay in a fight longer, kind of be the defensive trait you want um, for people team fighting and such. I right, hold on, just to show you guys. Hang on, just a second here. Uh, the chat. Let me show you. Look at this. Evade. Lol. What a joke. Touch of death. Ha ha ha. What the f? What are they smoking? <laughs> the whole chat is just like, what are you doing? Right, and uh, I think, do we have any firebrand notes to look over? Cal? Uh, unfortunately not. You know, mission Let's accomplished. Firebrand. Firebrand. Oh, firebrand. Does the pet count as a person? We'll say that to interesting people question. People are trying out firebrand. I doubt it, but we'll it'd be interesting lands. if it did. Yeah. No witty comments, Cal? I could have sworn you had Never. a joke prepared for this. Oh, okay, fair enough. No. Well, no, wait, this moving... is a serious stream now, Roy. Oh, oh no. Mesmer. World v. World support adjustments and PvE power mirage improvements. Port I think it's good to point out that Mesmer, uh, the more popular Mesmer support build, which uses a rifle, is going to be coming out about the same time as this. So these support adjustments are going to go hand in hand with the rifle. Anyways, moving anyway, on to our cost. Mesmer main should talk about the Mesmer notes. I've never played Mesmer. Um, oh, oh you mean meant Taylor, I see, yes, of course. Uh, we'll be looking at some world versus world support adjustments uh, for Mesmer, as well as some Mirage improvements uh, for the power build in PvE. And yes, our resident Mesmer main is chomping at the bit to talk about it. Um, that's a horse reference, and he loves animals. So Taylor, please take away this first Mesmer slide. That's a horse reference. All right, so changes. Null field. Reduce the field duration from five seconds to two in world v. world. Reduce the number of pulses from six to three in world v. world. Mantra of Concentration, increase the cooldown from 15 seconds to 25 in World v. World. Power Break, reduce the stability duration from 5 seconds to 3 in World v. World. And Desperate Decoy, this trade has been reworked, gain vigor when you evade an attack. Um, support Mesmer was something that got very large adjustments in um, you know, all game modes in the November update, and it came out really strong, a bit too strong. So we're taking some swings to you know make it at the power level of other supports. Um, First one here, Null Field, we're basically reducing the pulses. Um, the skill is incredibly strong, especially in World vs. World. It boom rips and Condi clears, which is exactly what you wanted to do. Um, and so it needs to be, you know, an appropriate power level um, for utility skill. Monster, Monster Concentration was similarly pretty insanely strong. Um, basically got all the stab you wanted from it. Um, and so we're nerfing it in different ways. And then you're going to see later that we're adding the stab back in another place. Um, and then... Hold on. Someone just pointed out my chat. They said, by the way, Mark, Heaven's Palm has a 20 second cooldown. And I was like, but not in PvP though, right? And they're like, yes, PvP. Hold on a sec. <laughs> it does. So every 20 seconds, they can instant kill someone who's, well, not instant, but they can kill someone who's downstate and evade while doing it if they are alone. Uh, I feel like that's going to be a huge problem. Then, you know, the last note here is kind of part of a dueling um, vamp up we're doing for the trait line. In competitive modes, some traits in dueling were just pretty archaic, and so we're bringing them back to, you know, what a trait should be in today's standard. Very cool. And some more Mesmer uh, No, excuse me. Yeah. Master Fencer now gives increased personal fury duration. Chaotic Transference reduced the shared chaos aura duration from 4 to 2 in World v. World. Temporal Enchanter no longer increases duration of glamour skills. Sympathetic Visage no longer in, uh, affects nearby allies and only pulls conditions from the player. Yeah, these are the other trait changes. Um, Master Fencer, this one's kind of important because a while ago we made this AoE and it was a stealth nerf to it in competitive modes because it used to be full fury uptime and then it went to 50%. And now we're making it basically still 100% for the player itself. So reverting that nerf that wasn't ever intended to be a nerf. Um, but then you can see the rest is basically more support Mesmer nerfs for Worthy World, um, reducing the amount of chaos aura I can give. Um, Temporal Enchanter is no longer going to increase, increase glamour durations and Sympathetic Visage is going back to be personal only. We felt that there was a lot of powerful traits in that tier and it didn't need the option for more Condi Cleanse here. Very good. Moving on to the specific uh, elite specs. We got some guy in the Twitch chat for this uh, for this recording says reinstalling Skyrim. <laughs> All right. Well of Precognition now grants three stacks of stability for five seconds to allies on the first pulse. That's pretty nice. That's kind of like how uh, druids are using Glyph of Equality to get stab in a pinch when needed for certain fights in the game. Uh, Phantom Razor increases the power coefficient from 0.8 to 1.0 in PvE. Split Surge increased the power coefficient from 0.45 to 0.85 in PvE. Mirage Thrust increased power coefficient from 1.0 to 3.0 in PvE. Dune Cloak has been reworked. Gain Mirage Cloak when you shatter with 2 plus clones. 
Sword of Decimation. The skill now applies its bonus damage and does additional defiance damage to defiant foes. And lastly, Infinite Forge now uh, refunds two blades after casting a blade song with five blades in addition to its previous effect. Yeah, Chrono Mirage Virtuoso Notes. Taylor. Yep, this is where it gets a bit more interesting. Um, well of Precog, this is where I was talking about the stab went back. So we're putting stab on this scale at the beginning to um, still let Mesmers have good stab access, but they need to commit more. They need to commit another utility slot to it. Um, so they're just having one that does everything. Um, and then going on, Power Mirage was a build that never really existed in. I think that's fair. I mean, that's the way that uh, Druids and Tempest have to do it too. I mean, five, you know, five, Firebrand has five weapons, so they got everything, but everybody else. PvE, and so why not? So we're buffing a lot of the power-based ambush skills to do, you know, pretty good damage, as well as a rework to Dune Cloak. Um, that was a trait that never really found a niche that we liked it in. So now when you gain Mirage, or when you shatter two or more clones, you're going to gain Mirage Cloak, which is going to be, you know, a new dodge and then more ambushes. So pretty good if you can successfully do that a lot. And then we have two little notes for Power Virtuoso in PvE. Um, Sword Decimation is now going to apply its bonus damage to Defiant Foes and deal additional Defiant damage, which is going to be another option if you need Break Bar. You can drop a bit of damage to take Sword Defiant or Decimation. Um, and then Infinite Forge was not infinite. It was actually kind of bad at giving you blades compared to the other options. So now when you use a Blade Song with five or more blades, it will refund two blades. So, you know, a lot of blades, still not infinite, but approaching. We talked about making it infinite, but then we decided that might be a bad idea. Yeah. It, was, it took a while for us to settle <laughs> on Infinite or five. We, we knew whatever. it was a number between one and infinite. And, uh... Yeah, two is what we ended up with, but um, a lot of, as we mentioned, a lot of support adjustments uh, for for mostly Chrono builds and World versus World. Um, you know, we adjusted a few things with it as well. Uh, a couple of targeted you know, changes in the January patch. Um, you know, are we thinking that this is going to be putting Chrono in a place that we want to see now that we've kind of you know toned it down a little bit for a couple patches? You know, is it still kind of there's a few more things we're potentially looking at if it still remains too strong? Is there uh, sort of a goal in mind with Chrono? Um, you know, when it comes to that, that support build, um, we're going to keep our eye on it. We definitely still want Chrono Mancer to be, um, you know, a viable option that people can play, but we don't want it to be you know overly dominant, um, where it's just you know taking over too many roles. Um, so we are going to keep our eye on it after um, these nerfs, for sure. Sounds good. That will wrap up our pink class notes for the... All right. So Necromancer section starts with World v. World support scourge adjustments. Now, we already know they're nerfing transfusion. They said that they were increasing the cooldown, and it was from something like 15 seconds to 50. It was something just gargantuan. Um, and then PvE Harbinger improvements. This preview, and we'll be talking about uh, Necromancer. Had a little bit of a hint at potentially one of the changes Hi, the Bobby, I see you. that Taylor spoke about. Uh, but we'll be looking at some support scourge adjustments in World vs. World, as well as Harbinger improvements in PvE for Necromancer. Cal, Signets, I know yep. you love them. So. All right, Plague Signet no longer passively transfers Condies from nearby allies to the user. Instead, grants reduced incoming damage to the user. Sorry, incoming condition damage to the user. Signet of Suffering, this trait now also increases, causes Signet skills to life steal from enemies they strike. Well of Power, reduce the cooldown from 35 seconds to 30 in competitive modes. We also have a bunch that? of random changes uh, to, you know, like one-off skills and traits. Uh, so Plague Signet here, um, we've updated the passive, so that is a Condi damage reduction instead of the transfer conditions, just because, obviously, transfer conditions are very thematic because you then transfer them out with the Plague Signet itself, but it ended up too often that you would just kind of grief yourself or troll yourself by pulling a condition that you didn't want, and it made it really difficult to justify using the skill a lot of the time. Uh, so the Condi damage reduction is kind of a, along the same lines where you can like take more conditions onto yourself because you're taking less damage before you transfer them out, and it should just have a lot better gameplay. So <clears throat> hopefully that will see a bit more plague significant because it is like uh, a pretty strong utility skill. It's just you know when it randomly immobilizes you, that's not a very good skill. Uh, so, yeah, so suffering, this is a slight bump up to this trade again, uh, adding some life steal to all the signet triggers. So it's going to be the boon rip, and it's going to give you a little bit of life stealing as well. And then cooldown reduction to all the power because it's you know, just again a skill that doesn't get a ton of play. So minus five seconds, pretty standard. Uh, Thirty seconds well power might be good skill though, so we'll we'll see. Yeah. Then we can. All right. So new slide. This one is only scourge stuff. Serpent Siphon uh, increase the cooldown from twenty to thirty seconds in World v World only. Uh, Sandstorm Shroud increase the cooldown from thirty to thirty five seconds in World v World. Sand Cascade increase cooldown from twelve to eighteen seconds in World v World. Desert Empowerment now grants Vigor instead of Alacrity in competitive modes. So they've re just removed the Alacrity from Scourge in competitive modes. Uh, Heinze says, just returning to Guild Wars 2 this week, and I see it's still being updated, has LD community. It does indeed, Heinze. Welcome. You can see here a lot of the Scourge nerfs for the world. Uh, see the Desert Empowerment granting Vigor instead of Alacrity. As Taylor said, we are really pulling back on a lot of the Alacrity applications on many professions uh, for, for competitive modes. modes. And then, you know, we see some barrier reductions or cooldown increases to skills to create barrier. Yeah. Nothing too crazy, honestly. Absolutely. All right, Harbinger. So, all right, so support Scourge of World v. World is getting some nerfs in, you know, the, the in many ways. Um, it's still going to be able to do healing. It's still going to be able to do barrier. It's still going to be able to do some boons, but not Alacrity. 
and it's going to have less uh, reviving with the uh, transfusion nerf that they did. Or uh, with the, uh, what was it, the, the drastic cooldown increase they were uh, putting out. Um, Harbinger. Vile Vials. This trait has been reworked. This trait now causes elixir skills to grant protection. The prot can be shared with Twisted Medicine. Wicked Corruption. Increase the damage modifier per blight stack from 0.5% to 1% in PvE only. Increase the critical strike damage modifier from 10% to 12.5 in PvE only. Cascading Corruption. Increase power coefficient from 1.0 to 1.5 in PvE. Uh, yeah, as the title slide said, some buffs to Power Harb. We kind of have a, a sense of where swords are going to land. Uh, obviously, those aren't quite on live yet, and we may need to adjust after that patch goes out and people actually use swords. We do think that Power Harb probably use a little bit of a bump. Uh, so we see a couple of those notes here. And then Vile Vials, a trait that kind of didn't really land well with the re removal of the cooldown reduction because there's a pile of vulnerability. Now it's going to grant protection instead. That is a shareable protection with Twisted Medicine. So it should make the trait a little bit more exciting if you are not interested in a damage bonus in that slot. All right, very cool. Moving on to Ranger. Best class. PvP Condition Druid Adjustments and Wilderness Survival Improvements. Everyone's favorite green class. Uh, we've got some Druid Adjustments for the Condition Build that we're seeing in PvP, as well as some improvements to the Wilderness Survival Specialization. And of course, um, randomly, I think, Taylor, you can talk about Ranger if you like. Alright. Wild Swing increased power coefficient from 1.0 to 1.5 in PvE and 0.8 to 1.1 in World v. World and PvP. Uh, going down here. Let's see. Where's the ranger stuff? Uh, so it's like the first f six notes are all untamed hammer. Uh, overbearing smash reduced cast time on the second hit by 200 milliseconds. Unleashed overbearing smash reduced the cast time of the second hit by the same. Savage shockwave increased the power coefficient per hit from 0.2 to 0.45 in World v. World and PvP. Thump increased the radius from 180 to 240. Unleash Thump, same thing with the radius. The first enemy struck by this skill will get, uh, grant a greater number of boons. For no particular reason. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm always do this. Yeah, actually, um, this is interesting. The last time we had you talk about Ranger, there was a lot of pet notes. Were you going to see pet notes here, Taylor? I don't think so. Oh, okay. Not yet. Is it disappointing for you? Uh, maybe a bit. I have enough time. <laughs> um, but what's not disappointing is Hammer, best weapon. Um, what we're seeing here is we're kind of bridging the gap between the damage, between the non-unleashed, leashed, brown, whatever you want to call them versions, um, to be closer to what their unleashed versions are, but still not as much damage, um, because we felt that they, you know, had a decent amount of utility, but they still weren't worth using because they just didn't do enough damage. Um, and so we're bringing up the damage on a lot of those that we felt were lower, as well as reducing the cast time on the second part of Overbearing Smash, the three, um, and then Thump is getting a radius increase to be closer to what other, you know, similar skills like Earthshaker and the LE Hammer 5 are. Um, and then lastly, Unleashed Thump is going to give a greater number of boons to the first enemy struck, kind of similarly to, you know, Elementalist Hammer or Fire 5, where it gives, you know, a decent amount of boons on the first hit and then less for every subsequent hit. I personally have not really been a fan of the Ranger Hammer ever since it came out, but might have to give it another shot after this and see if it feels any better. Um, new slide. All right. Healing Spring reduced the duration from 10 seconds to 5 Ugh. and reduced the pulse interval from 2 seconds to 1 second. Uh, oh, actually, that's not as bad. Reduced the number of conditions cleansed per pulse from 2 seconds to 1 in World v. World and PvP. Okay. So, half duration, but pulses twice as fast, means same number of total pulses. But, it cleanses half as many conditions as it did before, in competitive modes. But you still get the full healing and regen that it did before. Uh, refined Toxins. This trait has been removed and replaced with Survival Instincts. Gain increased outgoing strike damage and reduced incoming strike damage. Increased outgoing strike damage when above 50% health. An increased incoming strike reduction when below 50%. Increased incoming strike reduction below 50%. Okay, that's a mouthful. Uh, empathic Bond has been moved to the Master Tier, replacing Shared Anguish. This trait now cleanses conditions when swapping pets instead of when using a beast skill. And Carnivore... This trait has been added to the Grandmaster tier slot that was previously held by Empathic Bond. Steal health from enemies when you or your pet disable them. Whether or not that's good entirely depends on how much stealing it is. Beyond some more Core Ranger adjustments? 
Yep, these are the Wonder Survival um, changes as well as Healing Spring. Healing Spring is seeing a reduction in its duration by half. Um, we're also reducing the interval. It pulses from 2 to 1, so it's the same amount of pulses, just for less. Um, having a water field out for 10 seconds is kind of crazy, um, and 5 seconds, but you do it once every second is a lot more consistent and easy for people. Um, but we're also reducing the amount of conditions cleansed from 2 to 1 in Warp's World and PvP. Uh, the amount of cleanse that came out from the scale was just kind of insane. 10 conditions, 24-second uh, cooldown. It was a lot. Now it's 5, which is still a lot, but, you know, half. So, yay. That's quick, man. Um, yeah. And then back to Wither Survival, um, we kind of, similarly to Inventions, we want to see this be kind of a bruiser trait line, like defense on Warrior, but there just weren't any good traits for if you were like a power bruiser, so we're kind of trying to add them. Um, like Refined Toxins is getting a rework to now have incoming strike damage um, reduced and outgoing strike damage increased. Um, and then Empathic Bond was a trait that was just kind of redundant in the Grandmaster tier. It's a Condi Cleanse trait that competed with um, Wither Survival. Um, or Wilderness Knowledge that was also cleansed. So we're moving it to the Master tier, changing how it cleanses, so it can be a different cleanse option in that tier if you want to take that in a different Grandmaster, which, speaking of which, we're adding a new one, Carnivore. It's basically Lightning Rod, but instead of, you know, weakness and you can crit, it's Lifesteal. So healing and consistent damage should hopefully help out those Brawler builds that want to play like Hammer or the new Maces on, like, side nodes or skirmishes and get some sustain. Interesting. Are you sure Carnivore should be a Ranger trait and not a Necromancer trait? I yeah. don't know. Honestly, I don't know if this should be the name, because what if you're fighting a Silvari or a Mordrum? It's not going to rock. <laughs> doesn't work. Yep. It's case, fighting or playing or a card of Carnivore versus okay. Silvari. We could, could potentially see a trait name um, by release. Let you us know. know what you think. Yeah, please let us know what you think. Maybe it should just be called Gorman Dies. Who knows? Either way, we're going to be moving on to... <laughs> Gorman Dies. <laughs> just call it Nom. Uh, all right, Grace of the Land. This trait now provides might instead... Oh, we're back to this. God damn it. Uh, this trait now provides Might, which is what it did like two years ago, in, uh, instead of Alacrity in World v. World of PvP. Okay, so just like the Scourge, they're taking away Alacrity in competitive game modes. Because uh, they're, they're trying to get it out of there. Alright, Natural Balance. This trait no longer reduces incoming strike damage. This trait now grants Boon Duration. Hmm. Okay. So if you're already at, like, max boon duration, this does nothing. You, so you would just reallocate those stats elsewhere. Uh, Glyph of the Stars. Increase the cooldown of the skill from 48 seconds to 60 seconds in competitive. Reduce the number of condi conditions cleanse per pulse from 2 to 1 in competitive. Reduce the revive percent from 12 to 8 in world v. world only. Now, 8 is still substantial because it's, it's 8 per pulse. Uh, I happen to be logged in on my Ranger right now, so real quick here. Uh, so right here, you could see uh, Revive per Pulse is 12, but it does 6 pulses. So if it's still doing the same number of pulses, instead of 6 pulses of 12, it's going to do 6 pulses of 8. Which is can still be very helpful to get people up, but you know it's going to be 33% weaker than it was. And it's still AoE, so it can hit a whole pile of people. Um, so... Uh, the 60 second cooldown still having an AoE revive that's two thirds the strength of it used to be. I think this will still be a powerful skill, but they've definitely made it weaker than it was in world v world specifically. Um, let's see. Unleashed ambush skills will no longer be automatically used when auto attack is enabled. Okay. Uh, unnatural. Actually, wait, wait, let me go back to this. Unleashed ambush skills will no longer be automatically used when auto attack is enabled. So, does that mean if you weapon swap... Oh, sorry about that. Thanks, guys. Is, does that mean that if you uh, weapon swap and you're already autoing, it won't automatically use the um, unleash thing? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. There's a trait in Untamed where you can uh, do unleash every time you weapon swap. Um, un the, I occasionally play Quick Heal Untamed. And every time I swap weapon, I do the ambush right away. Uh, now I'm wondering if it's going to be you weapon swap and then you have to press the one key to manually force it to do it or something like that. Or if your auto attack just stops until you press the button. Uh, a natural transversal. This skill will now grant quickness instead of might. Increase the vulnerability stacks applied from 2 to 10. Quickness. The spell that teleports you on top of an enemy now grants you quickness. Bro, I, I play ranger even. I think this is too much. Increase vulnerability. Ten, oh, do, okay, so that means rain, melee rangers can port right on top of you through through terrain, and you have ten stacks of vuln, and they have quickness, and that's how the fight begins. <laughs> uh, I, I don't like this. Even as a ranger main, I think this is too much. That's 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 too much. Rude and untamed. Mm -hmm. Specs here for uh, Ranger. Taylor, you've been doing such a great job with the Ranger. You, you seem to know this class so well. I, I'm surprised. I'm shocked. Uh, I'm appalled. Yep. Please take it away. 
Race of the land, no longer alacrity, back to might. Um, decent amount of might stacking, you know, not decent actually, really good might stacking, so this trait still has a place. Um, just alacrity is not something we want to give to Druid anymore. Uh, natural balance, um, we saw the uh, Druid builds that are running over PvP alacrity right now. Alacrity is not something we want to give to Druid anymore, anymore. just end of uh, In other game modes, it was kind of useless, so we're changing it to Boon Duration, which is a lot less helpful in competitive game modes, but, you know, in PvE, it's pretty good, maybe even help a build like um, Kondi Alac Druid. You know, it doesn't really exist because they don't have enough stats to take that they want, so hopefully this helps them out there. Um, Glyph of the Stars is getting nerfed in competitive modes, kind of similarly to Healing Spring. It was a ton of cleanses as well as a lot of other things, so its cooldown is going up. Well, yeah, hold on. The main reason Condi Alak Druid doesn't exist is because that is the... Where is it? This is the trait that gives Alacrity, and this is the trait that gives huge condition damage. They're in different freaking... You can't have them both. That's the reason. Not because of the thing it's, he said. Uh, cleansing is going down, and in Warby World, its revive percent is also going down. Um, so that'll deal with all the druid adjustments. And now to Untamed. Um, this one's hopefully a big quality of life improvement. Um, Unleash ambush shields will no longer be auto automatically used when auto attack is enabled. Um, when you had auto attack enabled, it was really clunky. A lot of the times you would accidentally cancel your own ambushes, and it felt really bad. And was honestly a big barrier to entry to people that didn't know that it was, you know, a bad thing to have it on. Um, so we're hoping that this feels a lot better for players that they can have auto attack on and not worry about like ruining their ambush shields. Um, for Ranger, we didn't add this to Mirage because we felt that there weren't a lot of cases where you don't want to immediately use it. But you know, according to feedback, a lot of people want this function on the Mirage, and that's definitely a conversation we can have. Um, and lastly, Unnatural Traversal. Um, the skill the skill kind of died when we added a cast time to it. Um, we don't want to make it instant cast again. We were not happy with the gameplay patterns that it had. So we're kind of trying to meet it in the middle, where now if you use this while unleashed, you'll gain quickness instead of might. So you won't be instant, but your skills will be faster. Um, so hopefully it'll be land in the middle of where it was now and then. Um, as well, we're increasing the amount of vulnerability it applies. Very good. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all we need to say about Ranger. So we can move on to Thief. Hmm. Hmm. Hold on, I'm just thinking. Because Ranger, of course, is my main class. I know the most about this one. Uh, I'd say Necro and NG after that. But... Yeah, I'd be fine if none of this happened. <laughs> I, now, granted, I haven't done World v. World in a while. I still do a lot of PvP. But uh, I'd have to try this out. I, I haven't done Hammer in a while because I haven't liked it. I'll have to give Hammer another try and try it. Um... I understand why they do this. It's fair. I don't like it because it's going to be weaker, but it's fair. I do use Healing Spring. Um, this is interesting. We'll, we'll have to try these out because they're, they're shuffling traits around. And... Dude, they're freaking... They're reworking it. Look, dude, this, uh, this skill still has a boot icon from when it was Natural Stride. And it was, uh... You're giving movement speed. And they've changed it from movement speed to bonus damage... And now instead of bonus damage, it's boon duration, and it still looks like a freaking foot. It still looks like a boot. So are they just they cannot make up their mind with this thing. Uh, and the Glyph of the Stars slight nerf, I, I get it. And then this, I think this one is too much. Boot duration? Yeah, now it's bonus boot duration. That's right. Exactly. Uh, All right, uh, what, uh, what does the thief slide say? Quickness, dead eye tuning, and critical strike usability improvement. Dead eye, build we've seen rise and fall in the past, and some critical strikes usability improvements. Cal, you want to uh, start talking about thief? Sure, I can say some words about thief. Great. Uh, so kicking things off with some some smaller changes for here. You know, some piercing on rifle and. Okay, hold up. So thief, double tap now pierces, three round burst now pierces, tactical strike now dazes for one second instead of blinding. When striking from the front, increase power coefficient from 1.0 to 1.33. Uh, Larcenous Strike, uh, increase the power coefficient from 1.3 to 1.4 in PvP and World v. World. Shadow Portal no longer breaks stun. Uh, some minor buffs to Sword. We see Tactical Strike can have a short daze on the... When you front stab someone with Tactical Strike, you will get a short daze instead of a blind. Uh, and then bumping up the damage just a tad on a couple of the Sword skills to make it a little bit more appealing. Uh, as well as Shadow Portal no longer breaks stun. Right. Nothing too crazy, really. Uh, moving into the next slide, we have some trade checks. Keen Observer reads, Inc reduce the health threshold from 75 to 50% in PvE only. Uh, this trait now gives base critical chance that is increased above the health threshold. Twin Fangs, reduce the health threshold from 90 to 50% in PvE. This trait now gives base crit damage that is increased above the health threshold. Deadly Aim, this trait no longer reduces damage and now increases damage from pistol and harpoon gun attacks by 10%. Vigorous Recovery has been reworked and renamed to Pumping Up! Gain Might When You Dodge. Upper Hand, this trait now additionally restores initiative when you dodge. Ooh, that last one sounds fun. 
An initiative, of course, lets you press more buttons, and buttons are fun. Adjustments. So some more, as we said, usability improvements to some of the critical strike, tra critical strike traits that care about your health threshold. Uh, we've kind of been reducing these over time, uh, 90 to 75, now we're going all the way down to 50. Um, should make it just a lot more reliable, because just because of you know how important being able to critically strike all the time in PvE is, we wanted to give this a little bit more leeway than we might normally for uh, this type of trait, but we expect this to make just the gameplay a lot better. Uh, deadly aim also going to actually increase your pistol and harpoon damage instead of reducing it. That would be a nice little change there. Uh, and then we have a couple of improvements to acrobatics, vigorous recovery, kind of rework this to might on dodge as opposed to an extra source of vigor. What's and the name then, of the trait? Uh, the trait's called Pumping Up. Oh, I like that. It's probably named by our resident thief main, Taylor. Oh my goodness. Taylor, um, it's crazy how many I wear a lot of hats around yeah. here. <laughs> and then uh, upper hand, getting a slight buff as well, giving you some initiative back when you dodge. Very cool. What, uh, what do you envision, either of you can feel free to answer this, what do you envision um, the thief does when he pumps up? You know, it's just like cardio. You know, you're warming up, you're getting pumped, getting amped, ready, you know, getting... Cardio. Yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, Taylor, why don't you talk about Daredevil and Deadeye for us? <laughs> the thief's just out there like, all right, let's do some pre-murder stretches. Okay. All right, next slide. Havoc Specialist. This trait now gives a flat damage bonus when your endurance is not full instead of scaling with remaining endurance. Deadeye stole... Oh, that, that'll be a lot easier to use. Just You just have to keep your endurance below full. That's it. That'll, that makes that one much easier to use. Deadeye's Stolen Skills. Increased power coefficient from 0.5 to 1.25 in PvE. Shadow Meld. Reduce the count recharge from 45 seconds to 25 seconds in PvE. One in the Chamber. Increased damage bonus from 10 to 25% in PvE. Mercy. Increase ammo count from 1 to 2 in PvE. And Collateral Damage. Increase the damage coefficient from 1.5 to 2.5 in PvE. Uh, Havoc Specialist, this is getting changed to be a flat bonus, like Leviathan Strength. It was really annoying, um, because in PvE, you wanted to have no dodges to get max value out of this, and so when someone gave you Vigor, you were mad. That doesn't seem right, so we're making it flat. As long as you don't have full endurance, you're gonna get the bonus. Um, we kind of, like, average what we expect, like, you know, normally was, so in PvE, it's gonna be 15%, competitive 10%. Um, and then going down, dead Eye Stolen Skills, increasing the damage here. This is gonna be a buff to all Deadeye vigor. builds, but mostly the ones that do quickness, because they're gonna be casting them more, as well as some quality of life changes, hopefully, with Shadow Meld and Mercy helping, being options you can take for, um, you know, encounters where being a Deadeye is sometimes annoying. Hopefully these skills can help it be less annoying, um, as well as we see some buffs to some adaptive traits to make them more appealing. Very good. Very good. All right. I don't. I don't play thief. So you. You guys tell me if we're mad or not. I'll just. I'll just jump on board. Tell me if we're like yay or if we're just like getting our pitchforks. I'll just follow along. All right. That's gonna wrap up thief for us. We're gonna be moving on. Warrior slide. Competitive modes. Build improvements. PVP power berserker buffs and rush tracking improvements. Chat says, we're good, we're good, looks fine. All right, hey, nice job with Thief, guys. Nice job. You, Warrior, moving right along. Uh, we've got some build improvements for some builds that we're seeing in the competitive modes. Uh, we've got some, interestingly enough, PvP Power Berserker buffs. I don't know how back that is. Interesting? That is interesting. Power and Berserker sucks. Have you seen the numbers? I, well, apparently you have. Uh, but anyways, We've what, seen the what's, what's most interesting, of course, is this final note. Rush tracking improvements. A, a note that is one note long and yet important enough to be on the title slide for 11 years in the making. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 well, I'm not going to say that. Yeah, 11 years in the making. But uh, here we go. Cal, I know you're super excited about this, but otherwise it wouldn't be in the uh, title slide. Why don't you talk yeah, about Rush? Yeah, I love Rush. Right. Um, yeah, so Rush is the warrior skill. I believe that's the one that where you just, like, charge toward the target. Uh, double checking. Yeah, Greatsword 5. You charge at your foe and strike it. And like many skills in the game uh, that move you from A to B, it can be very fickle based on the terrain. So tracking improvements, they're basically saying that we're making it a little less bad in the places where it was bad. Uh, let's find out. All right, so Arcing Slice. Increase the power coefficient from 1,200 to 1,300 in PvP only. The power coefficient when striking a low health target is unchanged. I'm sorry, I said 1,200 because I saw four digits. 1.2 to 1.3. It doesn't have 1,300 power coefficient. <laughs> That's a little, little oopsie doopsie there. Uh, 100 blades. Increase the power coefficient per strike from 0.35 to 0.4 in PvP. Increase the final strike power coefficient from 0.8 to 1.0 in PvP only. Uh, Rush. This skill now tracks moving targets better. Savage Leap, increase power coefficient from 1.15 to 1.35 in competitives. Reduce cooldown from 8 seconds to 7 in competitives. Final Thrust, increase the power coefficient from 1.0 to 1.5 in PvP or OV World. The power coefficient when striking a low health target is unchanged. Hi. Hi. Uh, last Stand, increase base barrier from 1700 to 1900. 
Have anyone who's played question. with the greatsword on Warrior may be familiar with the times you press rush and run in the wrong direction. Um, it's not great. Kind of uh, feels <laughs> really bad. I don't know if there's much to say there beyond this interaction is miserable every time it happens. Um, so we've tried to improve it. We're really hoping that the changes uh, do hit what we're trying to do and make rush not run in random directions every once in a while. Uh, so, you know, we'll see. We can only hope because warriors, I think all warrior means will rejoice once rush actually does crack properly. Uh, beyond that, we have a couple other improvements There's to more? the sword. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, I mean, who cares about the other changes? We're improving rush tracking. Um, we should start. Yeah, so we see a couple changes here to the great sword as well. Arcing size giving a little bit of buff to its non execute damage. So if you get someone above 50% health, it'll do a little bit more than you usually usually do. But that execute damage is still high, still powerful, not going to change. We're seeing a similar change below to final thrust on sword, where just getting a little bit uh, smaller gap instead of having like a 50% or 100% increase when you're on the execute threshold, uh, making it a little bit smaller. So this skill still feels good to use, and it is not getting that full strength damage. Uh, also, kind of a, a minor bump up the first Savage Leap, uh, getting a little bit more damage and a little bit lower cooldown. Um, not much to say there. Uh, and Last Stand, getting a little bit of a bump for all the Last Stand users. You know, take some stances, take some Last Stand, you'll get a little bit extra barrier compared to what you get on live right now. Very good. All right, Berserker, I think we can have you talk about these as well, Cal. Sure. Uh, uh, power, Berserker. No, power Berserker. All right, so new slide on Berserker. Wild Blow is now unblockable and increases inflicts days instead of knockdown. Increase the power coefficient from 0 0.01 to 1.7. That's, um... That's a lot. So, that's 170 times more power coefficient than what it had before. So basically it went from not doing damage to it's going to do damage. Uh, slicing Maelstrom. Increase the power coefficient from 1.25 to 1.5 in PvP only. Uh, he's pulling on my shirt. Uh, Rupturing Smash, increase the power coefficient from 1.14 to 1.3 in PvP. And Skull Grinder, increase the power coefficient from 1.0 to 1.33 in PvP in World v. World. Uh, Chip, do you like the warrior changes? How do you feel? Silence. First off, we see a lot of power coefficients increasing for skills that aren't quite as good. Um, you know, Dagger and Hammer and Mace all getting a little bit of a damage bump to their primal burst skills. And Wild Blow kind of getting a significant change here to try to make it feel a bit more... I don't know what word I'm even looking for. Uh, but something that Power Berserker feels good playing with and gives them a little bit of ways to like interact. It's, it's obviously going to now be unlockable and dazed, so it's kind of really targeting those matchups where you kind of get hosed by blocks, and it's going to allow you to take this utility skill, you know, spend that slot, and have a lot more interaction for those matchups. So we're also changing it to be a daze instead of a knockdown, so it's going to be a really short daze, and the idea would be like an interrupt daze, and that also give it a chance to really do some damage instead of having that 0.1 coefficient. Hair. Is there kind of a vision for Power Berserker in PvP again? Uh, I don't know if we have a specific vision. There's a lot of options that you can play with Power Berserker. Like, you know, in the past, you know, going back to Heart of Thorn Zero, we did see, like, Mace Shield Greatsword as an option. Uh, but now Dagger in the mix, that could be a very interesting option. Hammer, maybe. I mean, a lot of these builds probably are going to be playing Greatsword. Um, and then, like, there's even a lot of flexibility in utility skills. It's just that, like, none of these builds are really up to where they need to be. So we are... You know, just improving a lot of things. That... I actually see a really good question in the Twitch recording of this. It says, can I ask why you guys are removing Alacrity from so many classes in World v. World, but you're keeping it on some, like Chrono? You're just going to make it so everyone will spam a lot Chronos in squads. I think that's a really good question. Back to Chrono Jail? <laughs> that aren't very good, and then seeing what players are going to try out once these change make it to live, let's see, like... Okay, is one subset of this build good, but the rest isn't? Or is everything still bad? Is Power Berserker suddenly great? You know, probably not. But, we, you know, we do want Power Berserker to be a supported archetype. And obviously, Connie's already great. Um, so we do want to you know, make Power a little bit better. All right, sounds good. And last but not least, we will be moving on to Revenant, where we see a single... They removed the lack from Scourge, right? Yes, Snacks. They completely removed a lack from the Scourge and Druid, I believe, in World versus World. Out here for the title slide. Uh, Legendary Renegade Stance Rework. A rework to the Legendary Renegade Stance, also sometimes referred to as Kala Stance. Um, Cal, I, I know you just talked a lot about Warrior, but I'm going to have to call on you again, unfortunately. Well, it's okay, we have an intermediate slide here with a bunch of unrelated notes to the Kala Rework. Okay, fair cover. Fair enough. Enough. We'll, hold, we'll, we'll pause on the Kala Rework for a second, yes. Take okay, Revenant and Vindicator slide. Energy Expulsion lowered the stability duration from 5 seconds to 3 in World v. World. Increase the cooldown from 2 seconds to 15 in World v. World. Serene Rejuvenation reduced the energy expulsion resistance duration from 4 seconds to 2.5 in World v. World. Drop the Hammer now has a shorter casting time to summon the Mist Hammer, which still strikes with a delay. 
This skill now also recharges Coalescence of Ruin if it hits. And Imperial Impact no longer extends boon duration on allies. Increase the protection duration from 4 seconds to 5 in PvE and, po and from 0.5 to 2 seconds in PvP and World v. World. Increase the might duration from 9 seconds to 10 in PvE and from 5 seconds to 8 seconds in PvP and World v. World. Increase the might stacks from 2 to 3 in competitive modes. Taylor, who would be glad to read these notes, please, please read these notes. Thank you. Yep. Uh, the bulk of this is support Vindicator in Roby World gameplay patterns. Again, we didn't like energy expulsion, pretty strong skill, especially for one with a two-second cooldown. And so it kind of devolved into you don't want to do anything except press this button. And so we're giving it a 15-second cooldown and lowering its effectiveness. Still a very good button. It gives uh, resistance and stability and a blast finisher, but you're going to have to do other things besides just press this. Um, as well, Imperial Impact is no longer going to extend boons on allies. There was another trait that we weren't happy to see the gameplay patterns it created. Um, boon extension is something that's really powerful, and on this, we just weren't happy with it there. So we're increasing the duration of all the boons that it gave, the protection of might and everything. And so we're going to see how it plays um, You know, when those have real durations on them, and that is where the value of the trait comes from. Very well could not be a great trait, and it will be on our eyes in the future, but that's what we're doing with it now. Um, as well, a small thing, drop the hammer. Um, it's now going to get some additional functionality and a change in its cast time. It's now going to have a much shorter cast time where you just swing to summon a mist hammer that will attach above the person that you... This is very important. Taylor's frame for his camera is a few pixels higher than the other two. And at the bottom of the camera thing, you can see a little green line from the Discord capture that lights up whenever he talks, and I can't stop seeing it. You have targeted kind of like dragons too, so uh, follow them. Minor correction, it will not follow. Is it will that not follow. You? So yes. the ground target it is. He cut that, so <clears throat> sucks for you guys. Um, but it will in re re recharge a Coalescence of Ruin, kind of like a lot of the other hammer resets. Um, yeah, you know, all the other heavy hammers had some sort of cooldown reset, so we had that here as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, reading the April Fool's notes clearly. Um, Yes. Who knows where we'll sweep next? Which five skill will recharge the slot two skill of its weapon? Especially on hammers. Are there any yeah. hammer skills that don't do that yet? Or hammers that don't do that yet? There are. Oh, okay. There are. There's, there's always room. room for more. There's always room. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> All right, but here we go, leading into what everyone is really excited about. All right. Legendary Renegade Summons are no longer targetable. Soul Cleave Summit. Reduce the casting time from one second to 0.5. Reduce the energy cost from 10 to 5. Reduce the energy upkeep cost from 6 to 5. In addition to current effects, Lieutenant Soul Cleave will now strike nearby enemies and heal nearby allies whenever another Warband member is summoned. In addition to the current effects. So the amount of damage and healing will determine whether or not it's worth it, but could try to keep uh, Soul Cleave and also another one out at the same time to get that effect. Break Razor's Bastion, Dark Razor's Daring, Razor Claw's Rage and Ice Razor's Ire have been reworked. These skills will now grant an initial effect when summoned, then perform a new skill. Activating these skill. He just like hooked his claws into my shirt and pulled. Uh, where was I? They, these skills now grant an initial effect when summoned, then perform a new skill. Activating these skills also triggers Band Together. Uh, band together, your next Legendary Renegade skill activates instantly and is enhanced. Activating a Legendary Renegade skill in this way does not trick... Are you for real right now? Does not trigger band together again. <laughs> One second. Oh my god. He keeps like going around my head and just like keep pulling on me from different directions. Is renegade. And when I say everyone, I really mean Cal. Uh, so Cal, please, please let us know what's going on with uh, with Cal. Thank you. All right. Let's see if I remember my spiel. I wrote a big spiel for the the post, and then you know don't remember it. Um, but there's a lot of things that we were thinking about with renegade stance or Kala. Um, you know, we've seen in the past uh, how this has played in competitive modes, especially That's PvP, not me. That's the uh, kind of like the unhealthy state of just how the gameplay of Kala currently is. Where you, know, you summon a lot of summons, they last for a long time, and it is you know, very visually loud. Can even make you know. I see there's a lot of things that are visually loud in our game, but we don't like to have things that are excessively loud, and Call of was definitely one of these. Um, so as we're going into this, we wanted to definitely improve the gameplay patterns for competitive modes, and we want to make sure that we aren't significantly impacting PDE either, because this is something that gets used, so we've taken that into consideration. Like, there's a, thing, a lot of things that are different, but we've uh, tried to tune the numbers such that, and tune the mechanics such that it should land pretty similar to where it is right now, and, you know, if we miss the mark, we'll, we'll buff it uh, to make sure that it is still good where it needs to be. Uh, but there are some significant mechanical reworks here that some of you may already seen on this slide. Uh, for, for, for first off, uh, no longer targetable. It's basically more in line with Ranger Spirits. And part of the idea here is that as part of this rework, all of the Call of Spirits, except for Soul Cleave, because that's still going to be an upkeep skill, uh, but the Spirits are going to last significantly less time. So you're going to summon a Spirit, and it's going to come in, give like an initial bonus, 
um, around itself and then perform some kind of skill as opposed to the current behavior. They all kind of have like these long, not upkeeps, but long channels where they perform actions for a very long period of time. We're trying to cut down on their overall lifetime and make them have like more immediate impact. So we're going to see like initial bonus on activate, then perform some kind of skill uh, that we'll talk about and show off in game as well, and then kind of phase out and leave. You know, kind of similar to Ranger Spirits in that sense. We're not going to have any shaking, no shaking chars like we have shaking spirits, but uh, they'll still salute you as they're. Will they slam? Play. No slams. One uh, of them does. Slams? Uh, yeah, that's true. There's a slam. There's a slam. Oh, so nice. Um, but the cool. other mechanic here that we kind of added to capture some of the feeling, like that warband feel of like you know I summon my warband member and then they kind of like team up or tag team. Uh, we're calling it band together because we love naming things for no reason. You know, there, you'll have the nice little yellow text on your tooltip that says band together. This means and something. Uh, so you basically, what it means. In school, Cal? <laughs> basically, what it means is that oh, when you question. cast <laughs> one of your legendary renegade sand skills, not soul cleave because again it's an upkeep skill. We're keeping cooldown short, not touching that one too much. But any of your other Renegade skills, when you activate one, it will trigger Band Together, which says your next Renegade skill, next Legendary Renegade skill, but call stand specifically, not any other F skills, uh, will activate instantly and then get a bonus. So the idea is like, you know, you kind of call for backup or you team up with two of your different spirits. And so the next one just comes in very quickly and then gets a little bit more powerful. Um, I guess there is the Soul Cleave note on this page already that everyone's probably read many times over since I've been talking for quite a while. Um, but we do see some cast time reductions, some energy cost reductions, just to make the skill a little bit more available. Um, and then a slight bonus to how it works, where every time you summon another Warband member, Soul Cleave will also do a little pulse of damage and a pulse of healing around itself. So it doesn't quite fit in with the Band Together mechanic as well, being an upkeep skill, we're going to keep the cooldown low. Like I said, the energy cost is going to be low. So if you could keep, like, summon Soul Cleave, get Band Together bonus, dismiss, resummon, you know, the gameplay is just, like, really, really janky. So we just added, like, this other separate tie-in instead, where it will get a nice little bonus when you summon any other Warband member, but not quite the same with these other ones. All right. Why don't you take a drink of water, Cal? Uh, good idea. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, from the chat, bro is yapping. For, yeah, and that's that's Taylor's job. For the record, I was in band I'm in yapping. middle school and high school. That, yeah, I just, just <laughs> Chip is now the head dev. I played uh, I played trumpet and French horn, or some more. Okay. Yeah, just, I I like sharing. Anyways, here we go. We can take a look at the specific skills, and Cal now refreshed can continue his spiel. Yep. So we can talk yeah. a little bit. About, we will show these off in game, so it will be great. Um, as I said before, we'll try to keep this a little bit shorter. Uh, but as I said before, <laughs> they're all going to have like a more unique skill than they did before. So Break Bracer is going to come in and use like kind of that empower animation. To so Cal, do a similar when skill are you to buffing empower, do some heal pulses and then a big range again. Also get some resolution. Uh, when it is enhanced through Band Together, I'm going to keep saying Band Together. It was great. Nice. Um, that will also give you bar give barrier to allies on that final, final pulse. Uh, Dark Racer Daring. Here's where we're going to have that uh, that slam. It's going to be that worldly impact kind of animation where it leaps up in the ground and slams down into the ground, uh, dealing a single hit of damage and daze. So, you know, a single? This skill would channel for a long time and keep dazing and keep dazing and keep dazing and keep dazing. And keep dazing. I will say, as play. someone uh, who was... doesn't play Rev but fights against Renegades from time to time in PvP, most of those spirits, I ignore all of them. The only one that matters is Dark Razor's Daring. Because that one, and I remember it because D for, D for Dark Razor, D for Daze. Because that one will spam Daze in an area. And I either need to interrupt that spirit or. Don't be in that area because I won't be able to do anything. So I'm curious how good the single days is going to be in the future because right now it's I already ignore all the spirits except Dark Razor because they, they don't matter. And then the Dark Razor one is the only one that's like a problem. Just do a single days and it will have you know a decent damage strike on there as well. So it's going to give prop to allies when you summon it and if it's enhanced it will grant resistance on that final impact. Okay, we haven't read this slide out loud. Uh, Break Razor's Bastion grants resolution to allies when summoned, then does a skill that heals nearby allies with three small pulses and a large pulse. The final pulse gives resolution and additionally grants barrier to allies when enhanced. Dark Razor Daring grants prot to allies when summoned, then does a daze on nearby enemies, then grants resistance to nearby allies when enhanced. Uh, Razor Claw enhances nearby allies' attacks with bleeding when summoned, then performs an attack that inflicts bleeding to enemies in the area. This attack also inflicts torment when enhanced. Ice Razor's Ire inflicts vulnerability on nearby enemies when summoned, then performs an attack which throws three projectiles at nearby enemies, inflicting Torment, Vuln, and Immobilize. These projectiles also inflict Chilled when the skill is enhanced. Impact. Razor Claw's Rage. Uh, that initial impact here is that it's going to give you some stacks. This uh, Razor Claw buff is now stacking, because it's not going to be lingering in the world for so long. It's just going to pop in, give allies some of those bleeding stacks, and then perform its own attack that does bleeding in the area. Does some strike damage, does some bleeding. When it's enhanced, it will also deal some Torment. And finally, we're going to have Ice Razor's Ire. Uh, instead of having that very long channel again where you throw like 20 different projectiles, it's going to pop in, uh, throw three projectiles at nearby enemies, up to five enemies you'll throw. We'll see this in game. Uh, but you'll throw a few different projectiles at those enemies, inflicting torment, vulnerability, and immobilize. And when enhanced by band together, the skill will also inflict chill on each projectile, which is very cool with the trait that says when you chill someone, inflict torment. Uh, so for condition builds, it does get that a little bit of extra gameplay. Hook. 
So why don't we take a look at these in-game, boy? Sure thing. And um, that is actually going to wrap up. We are going to take a look at this just commented, um, in a moment. But we, that is going to wrap up all of our profession notes uh, for, for the bounce preview. Um, as mentioned before, those notes are going to be posted to the forums at the end of the stream. Uh, but we are going to now begin taking a look at the Kira 2 weapons. We'll start with taking a look at the Colliery Works that we just talked about, but then we will also be taking a look at um, some updates to Revenant Scepter. So we will... Uh, we'll... Um, people are frantically asking in the chat, Cal, is Darkraiser hearing chat. still a stunbreak? Yes. All right. Well, and uh, and you can see that in just a moment. But yeah, here we go. We've got some... Uh, you can read the Band Together Band mechanic. Band Together. What a great name. Band to Together. That. Was there a song? Or a jingle? No. Maybe. I mean, there's, the, there's like the high school there musical, no. uh, we're all in this together song, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know. So you okay. see, uh, that spirit instantly cast, because I used another spirit before, and uh, activated the, the mechanic. Oh, wow, that's cool. That's awesome. And you saw I used Empower, and Fake Razor has a staff now, instead of a mace. That, that's not. pretty important, yeah. Um, as you can see, Soulcleave is going to still just be the upkeep skill, as normal. Uh, give me some damage stacks there as I use my Scepter. Whoa! Scepter on Revenant! Oh my gosh, who saw that coming? That's crazy. Um, but we can take a quick mouse over these skills, just to read them. Um, obviously we've got the heal. Razor Claws, loving some bleeding stacks. We've got Ice Razors, Ire. Everyone can screenshot the uh, the VOD if they want to stream. Which uh, will hopefully not be sure. muted. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, 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 like, double check to make sure. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. All right. He, he said they could check the VOD and <laughs> CFC said, which is hopefully not muted, which I was uh, jesting about at the beginning of the stream. Any last final thoughts you'd like to share for uh, for Cal there? Cal. Can you, uh, can you just, like, cast them one at a time so people can see the animations? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good call. No, I'll even yeah, shoot close yeah, yeah, yeah. I could, uh, should I even, I'll even go first camera. First, uh... That's oh, crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is pretty crazy. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I am a professional Ooh. player. Yeah, oh, we, really we do love our animations. Oh, we forgot to show something. Speaking right. of animations. Power. Oh. The staff. Not a base. Staff. Look at that flip. Okay, no enemies nearby, so I didn't throw anything. Unfortunate. <sighs> okay, good. Sure. Everyone, everyone, specifically Cal, is a critic. Cameraman. Okay. Love it, and love it. Here we go. Uh, yeah, obviously, you know, some pretty significant mechanical adjustments to Kala here. I'll just reiterate what I said at the start. Like, we still want this to fill basically the same role that it does in PvE. And, you know, maybe even be a little bit more accessible to, like, Power Renegade in PvE. With, like, the, the new, new strikes. Just one and, off. Uh, yeah, they're like the new Ranger stuff. spirits. Um, we do want this to be, like, viable in competitive modes. I'd love to see Kala playable in PvP in a way that does not make people get very upset. Because that was basically the entire history of Kala in PvP. Um, so, yeah, we'll be, obviously, you know, our favorite sentence of all time. We'll be keeping a pretty close eye on this. And, obviously, you guys, please give your feedback in the forums of what you think to, think of these new mechanics for Kala. Um, but I think we feel pretty good about them internally, so we will want to see how they play on live. And like, if there's further tuning that needs to happen, that will be super surprising. But we do want to see like how this plays out. Indeed. Um, and band, you know, band together. And uh, while we're here, I guess we can we can just get into um, our first updated weapon, which is Scepter. Um, Taylor, if you want to talk a little bit about it, we'll get the notes up on stream in a moment, but since we are in the game, we can, we can kind of show it off a bit. Yeah, so going over the larger changes, um, Blossoming Aura is now going to be ally targetable. You can still put it on an enemy. Nothing is lost here. It's just complete addition. You know, if there's not an enemy near and you still want to support your allies, you can put it on them. Um, and then as well, it's no longer going to charge up the auto attack, but it will charge up over time. Um, so you can detonate it whenever you want now, um, and its effects will scale based on how long um, it's been charging up. Um, so it is pretty, hopefully good um, quality of life for that skill. Hopefully, you know, always support your allies, even if no one's near. Um, and then the second part of the Scepter updates are going to be changing the Tether. Tether is no longer an upkeep skill, it is a fixed duration skill that, similarly to the two, will no longer charge up with auto attacks, but it will just charge up over time, scaling like that. And then at the very end of the Tether, you'll get access to the port or the pull based on what you have. Um, and then there are some balance updates um, to all the numbers on it, which will come up on the screen. You guys can read those. Um, TLDR is the auto attack was like really good and we made it not as good, um, but skills are still good. Yay. Nice. Excellent summary. Are they really talking that fast? Excellent. Uh, All right. Yeah, yeah. They uh, they were sponsored by Monster Energy Drink tonight. Uh, Revenant Scepter. Serene Slash reduced the power coefficient from 0.5 to 0.47 in competitives. Acervic Cut reduced the power coefficient from 0.5 to 0.475 in competitives. Motivating Whirl bar Base Barrier reduced from uh, 476 to 251, almost half. Reduce the healing power coefficient from 0.6 to 0.3 in PvE and from 0.6 to 0.15 in competitives. Reduce the power coefficient from 1.0 to 0.6 in P World War PvP. So for motivating world, the barrier and the healing were dramatically lowered. Uh, Blossoming Aura can now target allies. The amount of bonus barrier and damage granted by this skill are no longer tied to scepter autos. Instead, barrier and damage increase the longer the aura is placed on the target. The aura can be detonated early with the new follow-up skill, Detonating Blossoming Aura. Increase the cooldown from 5 seconds to 8 seconds in PvE and from 7 seconds to 8 in World v. World of PvP. Reduce the healing power coefficient from 1.0 to 0.3 in PvE and World v. World and from 1.0 to 0.4 in PvP. Increase the barrier per pulse from 20 to 33% in PvP only. And you can use the new skill Detonate Blossoming Aura to detonate the aura manually. Got more notes there, just pausing to let people screenshot. Um, these notes will of course be 
eventually. Uh, so the notes for the QR2 weapons. Uh, Otherworldly Bond no longer has an upkeep cost. Bonus effects granted by this skill are no longer tied to Scepter auto attacks. Instead, their effects strengthen the longer the target remains tethered. Interval ticks of boons and conditions decrease from 3 seconds to 1 second. Maximum duration of tether decrease from 100 seconds to 7 seconds. Cooldown increase from 6 seconds to 8 seconds in PvE only. The cooldown will only begin when the tether is broken. Increase the vulnerability duration from 5 seconds to 8 seconds in Worldly World of PvP. Reduce the might duration from 9 seconds to 4 seconds in Worldly World of PvP. And reduce the fury duration from 3 to 2 in competitives. Otherworldly Attraction, both the allied and enemy versions now cost energy to activate. Reduce the base barrier from 3800 to 1600. Increase the healing power coefficient from 0.5 to 1. This will not be part of the balance preview. These will be shown off uh, in the final release notes when those go live. But feel free to, as Roy said, screenshot, watch the VOD. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, obviously these these weapons are not coming with the March uh, balance patch that we previous, that we just previewed. Uh, they're coming with the QR2 launch. So they'll be out sooner. Uh, we're just showing off uh, the changes now. Um, and we can move on to Mesmer Rifle. Taylor, if you want to. Um, trying to, hold on. I'm skimming to see if I need to read this. I don't know if this is stuff we already know. I think some of this is new. Okay. Journey on Mesmer Rifle. Reduce the casting time from 0.9 to 0.5. Reduce the time from cast to impact from 0.5 to 0.2. The skill cannot be re-aimed during the cast. Increase the cooldown from 8 seconds to 1 point, uh, sorry, to 10 seconds in Worldview World. Reduce the base heal from 1800 to 1200 in PvE. And reduce the healing power coefficient from 0.9 to 0.67 in PvE. So about a third less healing. Uh, inspiring Images. Increase the... Cooldown from 15 to 20 seconds in Worldview World. Abstraction, remove the delay for it before the explosion. Reduce the conditions cleanse from 2 to 1 in Worldview World. Reduce the base heal from 3200 to 1900 in PvE only, and the healing power coefficient from 2 to 1.5 in PvE only. Phantasmal Sharpshooter, reduce the Phantasm's cast time from 1.2 seconds to 0.8. The Phantasm, uh, Phantasm's attack now strikes targets in a 240 radius of the impact. The skill now has two charges in PvE only. Also talk a little There's bit about Take it away. Yep. Uh, a lot of these are just number adjustments. The numbers were pretty high on the weapon, so they went down. Um, but a lot of usability improvements for um, the two and the three to hopefully be more snappy and supportive when you want them to be. Um, and then the bigger change to Phantasmal Sharpshooter. In PvE, it's two charges. And um, everywhere, it's going to hit a radius impact to stun AoE. So hopefully be a better crowd control tool and more liberal uses in PvE. Right. What more can you tell us? Do you make any good jokes about this in the blog post? I... Uh, singularity Shot, reduce the resistance duration from 3 to 2 seconds in Worldview World, increase the cooldown from 20 seconds to 30 seconds in Worldview World only, and reduce the cooldown increase from 100% to 33% in Worldview World only. Dimensional Aperture, added a visual effect when the portals open. Effervescence, increase the total base heal from 916 to 1300 in PvE, increase the healing power coefficient from 0.2 to 0.3 in PvE, and from 0.125 to 0.25 in Worldly World of PvP. Increase the power coefficient from 0.5 to 0.6 in PvE, and from 0.25 to 0.3 in Worldly World and PvP. Don't know if I did. I, it got cut by editing, so I can't say it on stream. Um, uh, but yeah, this is similarly number adjustments. Um, nothing crazy here, they're all gonna work the same. Um, the bigger one is the visual effect when the portal kind of does like a flash bang, like, please look at me, please take me. I exist for a reason, don't ignore me. Um, when the portal gets opened. Okay, very good. What's up? Uh, we'll be moving on to Warrior Staff. We'll show. Mm, Warrior Staff. The main thing about this is the three skill not requiring an ally targeting anymore. Valiant Leap, now a leap finisher and grants five adrenaline when it affects another ally. Linebreaker fixed an issue where this skill was affected by quickness. The skill is now ground tethered. Is it ground targeted? When arriving at the ground target location, the user will weaken enemies and heal nearby allies while granting them protection, aegis, and unblockable stacks. Snap Pull now displays a warning effect to enemies during the cast time. Uh, a warning effect to enemies? Okay, so that's like a PvP thing. Bullet Catcher fixed an issue where this skill would immediately be interrupted when auto attack was enabled. The skill no longer grants boon duration to the user while channeling. Uh, Defiant Roar, this skill now grants 5 adrenaline plus an additional 2 adrenaline per attack blocked by Bullet Catcher up to 6 bonus adrenaline. Rampart Splitter... Reduce the power coefficient from 1.25 down to 0 0.5 in competitives. So this off a little bit in game. Uh, Cal, if you want to talk a little bit about the staff changes? Yep. So, sorry, hang on just a second.
All right, I was checking with my son to make sure that Chip had been fed I think they got the and he has. He's just, he's just uh, really skills, starved so for attention. Had, you know, alley targeting behavior before it was very difficult to use effectively. Um, so we just made a ground targeted, kind of similar to like uh, Druid Staff, where like you obviously don't become a Wispier. You know, we thought we thought about it, but now you just run to a location and then do your final like roar that causes you to give all the bonuses did before. Uh, so still available as that long distance movement skill if you want. If you press this like right next to yourself, such that you're not going to need to move, it will just not bother moving. You just use the skill, the final skill immediately. So that's still a little too close. We can tune that number a little bit too. But you know, cast a cluster set, but it'll just it'll just fire off get that buff to all your nearby allies and get that healing as well. Uh, we also have a little, added a little bit of adrenaline to the kit because uh, it was a little bit too hard to generate adrenaline on the support builds. Uh, so we'll see that Valiant Leap skill two and also um, Defiant Roar on skill five are going to grant some adrenaline. You're not going to see it here in Roy's demonstration because it's going to grant you adrenaline if you affect another ally. It's not just going to say you know you're using the skill to go in and attack somebody to give you extra adrenaline, but if you are supporting your allies, it will give you some bonus adrenaline there. Uh, I've also added a little bit of a warm up to skill four uh, warm up effect so that people in Twitch chat are pointing out that they've added icons now. Uh, they did not have those last time. Enemies can see this a little bit better. Uh, Fear not, this is not visible to your allies. This is just visible to you, the player, and all of your enemies. You can kind of see the attack radius coming in. Um, and then, like I said, the note to Defiant Roar is that these go... Can we make the untamed green booger fields not visible to allies? <laughs> That's the worst part about playing heal untamed. It's just green fog everywhere. A little bit of adrenaline, plus bonus adrenaline per blocked attack. So as it scales with healing, it will also scale with the adrenaline that it grants. Um, we also fixed a really annoying bug with the block itself, where it would just always interrupt when auto attack was enabled. So it should actually work now. Much to make, that's what hopefully make everyone happy. Uh, we did also reduce the damage of the burst scale in competitive modes because it was just a bit too high for a support weapon. Thank you. All right, guardian pistols. Pistols with a S. All right, guardian pistols. Symbol of ignition now grants might every pulse because it didn't do enough. Hail of justice increased bleeding duration from six to eight seconds in PVE. Jurisdiction adjusted the timing for charge level 2 from 1 uh, second to 0 0.9 seconds. Adjusted the timing for charge level 3 from 1.6 seconds to 1.4 seconds. Adjusted the timing that the skill automatically fires from 2 seconds to 1.6 seconds. Reduced reactivation delay after casting charge level 3 from 0 0.25 seconds to 0 0.1 seconds. Uh, fixed an issue that could cause new instances of a trap to refresh old instances' durations. Spear of Justice fixed an issue that caused the skill's reactivation window to sometimes be longer than intended. Renewed Focus now properly recharges all virtues underwater. Oh my god, underwater content fix. We are getting underwater mech soon, I'll bet you um, next. Two of yes, I bet you. Indeed. Uh, Taylor? Um, it looks like some additional notes got added to this. Now we're bug fixes coming in the next patch, um, so you can read them if you want. They're not of note. Um, but pistols by themselves, pretty good weapon. Uh, by like landed pretty well, but we just might want to make sure it's competitive, especially the offhand and PVE. So it's seeing some number of adjustments. Um, and the uh, five is going to charge faster, and also you can reactivate it faster, so you can hit people in melee range more reliably. Um, but other than that, this weapon landed pretty well. Uh, always going to keep our eye on it, of course, um, but nothing big changing with it. Yeah, really. The biggest change we made for pistols was reworking the torch trait. Yeah. Because it makes it less mandatory to have multiple torches equipped. Mandatory. All right, very good. Um, Ranger Maces. You can also talk about that one if you want. Boop. Ranger Maces. Oaken Cudgel. Increase the prot application radius from 240 to 360. This skill now applies a heal over time effect to your pet when used. The skill is reduced when merged as a uh, soul beast. This effect is reduced when merged as a soul beast because then it would just be giving it to yourself. What is my main class? Uh, Ranger Otter. But I play a lot of Inji and Necro, but I don't play the other six classes nearly as much. Thistle Guard. Reduce the cast time from 0.5 to 0.34. Wild Strikes. Reduce the total power coefficient from 3.0 to 2.4 and reduce the day's duration from 2 to 1.5 in World v. World of PvP. Fixed an issue that prevented this skill from working with Quick Draw. Rampant Growth. This skill now heals nearby allies when cast. Fixed an issue that prevented this skill from interacting with the let loose trait. Uh, what was... I was trying to find... Sorry, Oaken Cudgel was the three, Thistle Guard was the four. Okay. I was going to be talking for a little while, I think. <laughs> uh, uh, yep. Anything interesting, so, particularly about Ranger Taylor? Um, does it do anything to you? Uh, I don't know what you mean by that. I... Does it possibly make you larger? I... Are you now going to be being becoming larger more frequently? Uh, Who doesn't love that? Go with this. 
Okay, that was an interesting setup. Uh, anyways, Oaken Cudgel. Don't worry about it. Oaken Cudgel is now going to give a heal over time effect, kind of, you know, all, a lot of, all the main hands, two hands, except for Hammer, of course, has a tie into the pet, so we're going to add one for Maces. It's going to apply heal over time effect. Heal over time is going to be interesting because it's going to use even more Astral Force when you use it as a Druid. Um, the effect is lessened when you're a Soul Beast because we want to make sure that it's not, like, crazy good. Um, but we will be, you know, bouncing around that as well. Um, wild Strikes getting damage reduction and daze reduction in PvP. Um, in Worldly World, the damage on the skill was quite frankly crazy. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the good news is now that you're going to be growing bigger more, as Roy mentioned. Oh! And we're shifting the power of the weapon into that aspect of it. So it's not, you're not going to hit as hard, but you're going to hit hard. Like, you're going to do it more, basically, with the cooldown reduction and everything. So, looks like a nerf, but in reality, we're hoping it's going to shake up to be even as what it was in beta. For anyone who's confused, you should go read the wonderfully crafted blog post that uh, a Mr. Taylor Brooks made, uh, posted to our website on uh, Wednesday. Yes. What's not uh, to love? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I, don't, I honestly nope. couldn't tell you. Did you know Anyways, the growth size? That seems like a pretty big oversight. Yeah, we Can might we grow do that. Yeah, um, might what do that every balance patch. Just increase it one percent every time. Uh, new slide. Na nature's strength, uh, which I believe is the that's the buff you get, right? Yeah, nature's strength is the buff you get after you get enough stacks, that where you get bigger. Increase the duration from fifteen seconds to twenty-five. Reduce the number of stacks needed to trigger force of nature from six to five. So bigger, more often, and more stamina in it. Force of Nature, reduce the damage bonus from 25% to 15% in World v. World of PvP. Tapped Out, reduce the duration from 15 seconds to 10. Blood Moon, fixed an issue that could cause this trait to affect the player when being dismounted. Huh, that's a druid trait. I don't remember having that happen. That would suck. Fixed an issue that caused some spirits to have higher cooldowns than intended underwater in PvE. On, on that note, my mech has an infinite cooldown underwater. I would love for them to fix that. I hope so. Um, similarly, we're seeing the changes that, you know, I was talking about make you grow bigger. Nature Strings is going to last longer, so if you swap weapons and swap back, you won't lose all your stacks, hopefully, if you're, you know, doing your rotation and everything, um, as well as number of stacks from 6 to 5. So if you just hit all your buttons, you're going to get it immediately. Um, no more waiting for that next cooldown. Um, because it is getting a lot easier to use, we are reducing the damage bonuses in competitive modes preemptively. It wasn't really a problem in the beta, but that's because no one, you know, hit it at all. So now hopefully people hit it, and damage bonus is going to be a more sane number, um, as well as the bug fixes that made it into these notes. Yay. Yay. All right. Yay. Necromancer Swords. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to call on you one more time. Necromancer. Um, yes. uh, swords. Everybody hated the swords. They did low damage to the enemy and high damage to yourself. They were awful. What are they doing? Innervation Blade. Reduce the aftercast of this skill and improve projectile tracking. Increase the power coefficient from 0.9 to 1.1 in PvE. Innervation Echo. Reduce the aftercast of this skill and improve projectile tracking. Increase the power coefficient from 0.9 to 1.1 in PvE. Very small buffs. Deathly Innervation. Sped up the cast time by 15% and improved the projectile tracking. Increase the power coefficient from 1.3 to 1.4 in PvE. Hmm. Ravenous Wave. Reduce the aftercast of this skill and increase the speed of the wave. Increase the life force gain from 10% to 12. Reduce the power coefficient from 1.4 to 1.2 in PvP. But I, I, well, it's really not that unfortunate because I think you love talking about this, these weapons. Uh, so I, yeah, yeah. Please, and we'll, we'll show these off in a moment. No, as a Necro main myself. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if you can really claim that title. One sec. Someone in chat asked for the link to this video. Uh, it's right there. No smashy. What's at the top of chat is uh, the notes. I was more uh, excited about your love for the names of the skills, but... You're going to see a lot of notes for Necromancer Sword, and they all mean that they're going to happen faster and they do more damage. Um, so, nothing is of note. Uh, the changes are going to be more apparent when you get in the game and play with it. What did you just read? Um, I, I don't even know if I should read these now. They, he basically just says that the sword stuff is faster with more damage. Satiate. Increased power coefficient from 1 to 2. All right, Satiate is doubled uh, in PvE, and 0.8 to 1.2 in PvP, lowered the low health damage modifier from 100% to 50% in PvE, and from 50 to 20 in competitives, reduced the health cost from 15 to 8. So satiate up to a double damage buff in PvE, and almost half the health cost. That's pretty major. Path of Gluttony now begins movement immediately, increases the power coefficient from 1.75 to 2.0, and from 1.0 to 1.25 in PvP. Increased the first hit healing from 1600 to 2400 and is now Elite Finisher. I should make a clarification on the previous note I was reading Satiate. It's the power coefficient that is being doubled, not the total damage, but it will still be substantial. Gorge! 
This skill now begins movement immediately, increases the power coefficient from 1.75 to 2.0 in PvE and from 1.0 to 1.25 in PvP, increase the first hit healing from 1600 to 2400. This skill is now a leap finisher. Reduce the health cost from 20% to 12% PvE. Hungering Maelstrom. Sped up the cast time by 15%. Reduce the aftercast of the skill. Reduce the, cast, the time from cast to damage by 0.25 seconds. Increase the power coefficient from 1.5 to 2.75 in PvE. Only. The names of the skills, though. Uh, Actually, let me, let me go back to skill. I, yeah, I think the good skill is on the next slide. Um, the good skill? Yeah, there's more of the good. same damage yeah. things. Garmin dies. Increase the power coefficient from 2 to 2.5 in PvE and from 1 to 1.3 in PvP. Reduce the health cost from 20% to 12 in PvE. Devouring Visage. This skill has been reworked. It now throws a projectile at your target that explodes on impact. Fearing enemies hit. Consume. This skill has been reworked. It now siphons strength from targets hit by a devouring visage, damaging them and inflicting weakness. Gain might for each target afflict, uh, affected. Working better. Uh, Absolutely well, now leap finisher. Yay. Yeah, you can see wow, that's so fast. Wow. That Whoa. Fast. That's crazy. That's, uh, uh, that's but a But basically the big change that actually matters to everyone is... The five skill got reworked. You see Roy just used it there. Uh, you're basically going to throw out an orb that explodes fearing people, and then the reactivate ability is to drain the strength of enemies' hits, which will give them weakness and you might, as well as it'll give them a little like life leech effect, kind of like we see on the Dagger whole chat is uh they're gormandizing. Just mousing over some skills. Um as some people have noted, we are not showing every single weapon off. Um these are gonna be out in a little over a week at this point. Um, so you'll be able to see them on yourself. Uh, we wanted to show off the ones that were receiving um, some of the more major reworks or changes or updates. Um, but, you know, they'll be, they'll be, they'll be seen in-game very shortly. Okay, so that's the Necro Sword. We can start moving on to Thief Axe. Cal, you want to talk about this one? Thief Axe. So Thief Axe was pretty bad in PvP and pretty insane in PvE. Yep, so Thief Axe. Um, a lot um, of all right, so Axe skills that cost initiative will now correctly trigger lead attacks and Assassin's Reward. Deadly Ambition. This trait will now function as expected, with Axe dual-wield skills. Cunning Salvo, Malicious Cunning Salvo. Axe is created by this skill will now properly gain bonuses when being recalled by dual-wield skills. Axe is created by this skill will no longer always inflict revealed when being recalled by dual-wield skills. This skill is now a blast finisher. Reduce the bleeding stacks from 3 to 2 in PvE only. Malicious Cunning Salvo, reduce the poison stacks from 3 to 1 in PvE only. Harrowing Storm now recalls axes at the target enemy instead of at the user. Reduce the inflicted torment from two stacks to, uh, for six seconds to one stack for four seconds in PvE. For the axe, there's a lot of traits that didn't interact properly. Um, also, you know, some projectile behavior problems where some of these skills were a little bit more difficult to hit than we may have wanted. Uh, so we've cleaned up a lot of the projectile behavior and also cleaned up, like, I don't know if I see the note. No, I do see the note here. Yes. So you change the dagger offhand dual wield skill to also recall axes at the target instead of at yourself. It's still going to pour it in, but the axes will aim at your target instead of yourself. So it's just a little bit more usable. A lot of usability improvements for axe because, you know, I did a ton of damage during the beta, um, but the main feedback we got is that there's just a lot of clunkiness with, you know, the skills or the projectiles or any of those things. So that was our main focus. And then, you know, we nerfed the damage a lot for PV because it maybe did a little, just a little bit too much damage. Not, not that much, though, just some, some uh. minor adjustments. And that's what, that's with like multiple traits not working properly. So, <laughs> so like minus twenty percent damage modifiers. Think of what could have been. Could have been. If you could have hit seventy k. Uh, so hope, hopefully a little bit more back to earth. With yeah, the, it was like sixty four thousand DPS not much else on the facts. Just uh, of course pausing. Again. Oh, yeah, for anyone who missed that, when it was at its peak, it was doing sixty four thousand DPS on a golem in the perfect situation. It was um. It was pretty busted in PvE, but in PvP, it was hard to freaking hit anything. Uh, Alright, Thief Axe. Venomous Volley. Reduce the poison duration from 6 seconds to 3 in PvE. Spinning Axe. Reduce bleeding duration from 6 to 3 in PvE. Improved Missile Targeting Behavior for all Axe skills. Improved Missile Velocity for all Axe skills. Fixed an issue that could cause preparation skills to not clean up properly at the start of a PvP match. Apparently, we fixed a bug with preparation skills. That's not related to the facts. That's a good change. That is a good change. All right. Can we do this one? I think you did do this one. I think we did this one, but we just love it as a rifle. It portaled to the end of this, of the, the end of the, uh, the PowerPoint. That's funny because engineer shortbow. Okay, so uh, this one, uh, as I mentioned on our last video on this topic, uh, with the notes, I spent a day trying out the engineer shortbow. 
it was pretty bad. Um, and there was a lot of things wrong with it. One was like how slow everything was, because it's like you'd fire, arrow would go up, arrow would come down, it would hit, it would deploy a little field, and the field was small. And for the slow, t you know, the, the time it took to go from A to B, and then the size of the field, it was very hard to hit teammates unless you were just on a fight where you were never moving, like some PvE certain boss encounters. Um, and then on top of that, it just wasn't that good. Even if it did hit, it wasn't good. Uh, it, like, it was competing with Mace Shield for support, and it was worse than Mace Shield. Uh, Alright, so, new notes. Shortbow. The weapon's mechanics have been reworked. Arrows now explode on impact automatically and have a larger area of effect and have a chain reaction field for short duration. The next arrow that explodes in the chain reaction field will consume the field, augmenting the arrow with a bonus effect. Essence of Animated Sand. That's the one that gave Scourge Barriers. The skill has been reworked. Fire an arrow equipped with a payload that explodes enchanted sand on impact, granting barrier and might to allies. Chain Reaction for the next shortbow skill in the radius will grant additional might to allies. The Essence of Living Shadow. The skill has been reworked. Fire an arrow equipped with a device that spreads the shadow magic across the ground on impact. Healing and removing conditions will run allies with the initial detonation and healing allies with each pulse after. Chain Reaction, the next shortbow skill in the radius, will remove additional conditions from allies. Uh, hold on, I'm just reading that again. Heals and removes conditions, then heals on pulses, and if it's the combo, it does it removes initial, additional conditions. So the healing is not increased, okay. It has a portal on it. All right, but here we go, Engineer Shortbow, the moment everyone has been waiting for. Um, a lot of reworks for this one. I hope um, they show this one on a dummy. With it, if you like. Uh, yeah, I will note that we might have done the bit where we forgot the class, except we literally did it um, with Elementalist. So if Cal wants to speedrun in his head what we did with Ellie. There's no Ellie notes in this PowerPoint. Uh, let's see, what did we do? Off the top of my head, that's impressive. Um, luckily, we didn't do that much for Ellie. Like, uh, there's of... really only one note that needed to be in here, and that was the Piercing Pebble change. Uh, yes, Piercing Pebble now pierces. That's a good one. Uh, glacial Shot is now named Frozen Fusillade. And Elemental Unload is now Elemental Explosion, so that now there's alliteration on every skill, no problem. Um, slightly more seriously, we did update a few of the animations to be a little more spellcasting feeling. Like, instead of just... I the Twitch chat is exploding right now because they didn't even make Ellie notes. Shoot my pistol, I shoot my pistol, I shoot my pistol. And there's somewhere we're gonna be, like, throwing projectiles or casting projectiles uh, instead of just a bunch of shoot animations over and over and over. And there's probably some good changes in there, too, but Roy didn't put them in the PowerPoint, so that's really unfortunate. If only someone had reviewed it. <laughs> hmm. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. Anyways, back to Shortbow. I'll go look him up right now. We can, we can come back. <laughs> okay. Engineer Shortbow, um, this weapon had a bit of a facelift, uh, quite reworked from when you guys last saw it. Um, it'll all make more sense when we go in-game and show it off, but basically, um, almost every skill was touched. The new mechanic um, for chaining is going to be when you shoot an arrow, it'll Wait. throw it off, but... Okay, hold on. Liquid Wrath now fires a volley of arrows uh, that does magical flames across the ground on impact, granting Prot and Aegis on and the initial detonation and leaves a fire field. Chain, the next shortbow skill in the radius, will grant additional prot to allies. Fire field. So if you do that one first, then do the others, that will blast it, and that's going to be more might generation. Borrowed Time fires a row of arrows with a device equipped with a chronal in magic, stunning enemies and applying super speed to allies. Chain reaction, the next shortbow skill in the radius, will daze enemies hit basically um almost every skill was touched the new mechanic um for chaining is going to be when you shoot an arrow it'll land so if roy just shoots off any arrow you will see there is a white field under it and your next arrow that lands in that field will inherit an additional effect based on the arrow that last did it um those are all listed in the full text that is so roy wants to, like hover over me, those much faster them. like the two skill will make it grant might the three skill will make it cleanse conditions the four skill will make it give additional protection and the five skill will make it daze um so a lot of the skills have been reworked um the two skill for instance is now going to give barrier and might um, they all explode instantly. There's no putting it down and then detonating it. It's press it, it lands, it does its effect. Um, so that's pretty good. The three skill is going to be a heal in condition cleanse when it lands, and it's also going to leave a pulsing dark field that will heal some more. So you're gonna get a lot of that heal up front, but also some heal if you stay in it. And then four skill is going to give Aegis in protection as well as the fire field. It's gonna be a pretty big radius, as you can see. It just fires multiple arrows that land and explode. And then the five skill is going to be that stun as well as super speed, as well as a blast finisher, a lot of things. And it's gonna be a different shape than the rest of them. It's gonna kind of fire. All right, so a couple immediate thoughts. This is competing with Mace Shield, so it's fair to compare to that. Mace 2 gives regen and vigor to your party and barrier. Shield skills with the trait that all supports take give prot. 
Um, so that's regen, vigor, prot. Uh, and barrier, if you want to count that. The bow gives prot, regen. Oh, actually, does it even give regen, or does it just do healing? And then the five. Hold on and a then fourth heal. All right, so there's Aegis and Prot. In condition. That's just healing. Plans, there's no. And might. So a lot. So you, d there's no regen and no vigor on the bow. The, both the bow and the mace give a. Uh, sorry, uh, barrier. So they, the both both sets give barrier. Mace shield has three CCs. Bow has one CC or two if you combo it. So the bow, it's a tie for barrier. The bow is worse for interrupts. The bow is better for might, but mace shield is better for regen and vigor. A lot of the skills have been reworked. Um, the two skill, for instance, now going to give barrier and might. Um, they all explode instantly. There's no putting it down and then detonating it. It's press it, it lands, it does its effect. Um, so that's pretty good. The three skill is going to be a heal in condition cleanse when it lands, and it's also going to leave a pulsing dark field that will heal some more. So you're going to get a lot of that heal up front, but also some heal if you stay in it. And then the fourth skill is going to give Aegis in protection, as well as the fire field. It's going to be a pretty big radius, as you can see. It fires multiple arrows that land and explode. And then the five skill is going to be that stun, as well as super speed, as well as the fire field. Gonna... Hold on. I am trying to read it. That, was that radius like 300? It'd be a pretty big radius, as you can see. It fires multiple arrows that land and explode. And then the five skill is going to be that stun, as well as super speed, as well as a blast finish, or a lot of things. And it's going to be a different shape than the rest of them. It's going to kind of fire a row of arrows as it lands, one, two, three. So it'll be kind of like a rectangular hitbox deal to kind of stun enemies that are farther away. Very good. Yeah, so obviously very focused on usability improvements. And there's been like some pretty significant mechanical reworks, but... The big thing is making Shortbow feel like a lot more fluid to play and a lot more understandable to play, I think was the main goal. So we do with Retailer. Yep, for sure. Um, Shortbow was pretty ambitious, but in real gameplay, it was very clunky. And, you know, we want our game to be moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, and Shortbow just really didn't um, support that um, with what we wanted to do. So we made a big focus. Uh, NG can get regen from a trait. Um, you, NG can get regen from a few places. Uh, Medkit 5 gives regen, but not 100% uptime. Medkit 2 can give regen, but only if it hits someone who's already wounded. Uh, if it hits someone at 100%, well, actually, well, there's Bandage Blast. Um, the... What else is there? There's the trait where if you cleanse a condition from someone, they get a regen application. So if you're in a fight where there's conditions, you can easily keep up 100% regen. But if you're in a fight that doesn't have conditions, then it can be more difficult if you're reliant on that trait. So it, that's situational, but true sometimes and making skills feel more fluid to use as well as have, you know, reasonable radius for their effects like other support weapons. All right. Uh, I think that'll about wrap it up on this. Did you have any notes you wanted to share with Elementalist Cal? Uh, I mean, it's mostly, it's mostly pretty minor stuff. Like, a lot of the feedback we did get during the beta was about, like, just how samey all the visuals felt. Uh, so that was, like, one of our larger initiatives for uh, the updates. But we did end up uh, nerfing damage a little bit because it was a bit high uh, as well. But then also some usability, or not usability, but the visual clarity improvements for like when you have a bullet that's going to be displayed on your buff bar now mounting and dismounting is not going to remove all your bullets forever anymore they will come back once you are dismounted um, there's some minor cast time reductions and stuff like that um but really no, no like major massive changes for reload pistol very good um yeah that's actually going to wrap up the preview uh it's gonna be everything we wanted to show um as the first uh mecha gives region if you support mech wait what does it Mace 2 from Mechanist gives regen to your team. Um, the mech himself? Which skill on Mechanist that's not the mace gives regen? If there is one, I've just plum forgotten it. Just sort of part of that was the uh, balance patch preview notes for March. Again, there's no supposed to form after the stream ends. Yeah, Elixir Gun Tool Belt does, uh, if you don't need to save it for a uh, stun break, yeah, you can get a bit of regen from that. Um, the notes you saw for the weapon, the updates to the weapons, um, will not be posted on the forums right after the stream. Again, that's going to be coming out in QR2, so that's going to be, um, before the March update actually happens, the bounce patch. Um, and you'll be able to get your hands on the weapons, updates and all, very soon. Uh, but yeah, obviously, thank you all for watching. Uh, as always, please send your feedback, uh, to us, um, through the forums, through various other outlets. Uh, Taylor, as, you know, displayed on the stream, loves reading Twitch chats, um, so I'm sure he'll be, he'll be in there hanging out. Um, and yeah, we, uh, as mentioned as well, at the beginning of the stream, we will be heading over to, um, a little, a little bit. Uh, Twitch.tv slash JebroUnity. I think he was actually hanging out in, in stream. Uh, we'll be doing a little bit of a podcast with him, talking about some of the new weapons uh, again. And uh, yeah, three of us will be reappearing there, or potentially not necessarily reappearing with our cameras. We, we don't know yet. Uh, but either way, Cal and Taylor, any final thoughts for the stream? Uh, why don't you go, you go first, Taylor? 
Uh, please, please. <laughs> I could never. Uh, Taylor, can you get your dog to come on camera now that we're wrapping up? Uh, sorry, not right now. Now that we have our 20 minute outro. Yeah, we still have plenty of time before the podcast starts, so we could probably just sit here talking for a little bit. Uh, let's see, do we have any any good news? Uh, Valentine's Day was a couple days ago, so I know it wasn't in this PowerPoint like it was last year, but happy Valentine's Day, everyone. I was alone again. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Uh, yeah, well, that's that's unfortunate. Really. All right, you guys should probably just wrap up the stream. Like, you should, you should <laughs> that's stream. unfortunate, Roy. <laughs> I mean, I yeah, As probably. always, gamers. I'll see no, you in the mess. No, 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 that's not, it's, no. No, no. Do you have any final thoughts, Taylor? Great, okay, okay thanks for being here. Cal? Uh, yeah, honestly, thank you to everyone who puts up with our nonsense. Um, There's no nonsense. Not much else to say. We'll have some more nonsense in about, I mean, I don't know what time we're starting, so. Okay, hold on, really quick. Someone someone in my chat is, is yelling at me that Mechanist provides regen without me. So I logged out of my mech. We're going to look at every trait here. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Uh, when your mech is struck while under half health, it activates... Of exigency protocols gaining damage reduction and regen for so you the mech when hit below 50% health gives itself regen for 10 seconds. That's not no. Is it basically no? Hopefully I have time to get lunch. Okay, great. Well, as always, thanks everybody for watching, and until next time, we'll see you in the mists. But <laughs> the Ellie's in chat screaming scammed because they're literally they didn't show it at all. Is regen good? Um, so, so, for people that have never played uh, healing builds in Guild Wars 2, on average, if you have regeneration up on your party the entire time, it will be over 50% of your healing output. I'm not joking. Like, you, you can run a meter and then heal a group through a dungeon. Regen is over 50% of the regen you do to your party. It's substantial. Like, it, it, it's, it's a heal every second. It, it is literally a heal every single second on, on your party. So it, running a support that doesn't provide regen, and there's not many that don't provide it, but running a support that doesn't provide regen is very taxing because you're liter literally, you're having to work almost twice as hard because if regen was doing half your lifting before and you don't have it, you've got to heal twice as much as you used to. Uh, unless someone else does it. Um, it's a heal every second, but does the heal it provide actually matter? Yes. On my druid, the heal is like four to 500 per second. So it basically, if anyone gets hit with any damage and they're at like 90% health or more, I just ignore it because regen constantly tops them off. So like on, you know, those boss fights where the boss is just hitting the whole room with damage every second, like a, a veil guardian. Um, usually it's just the raid is doing this. And then when I don't have to do anything, and then when the raid actually takes a big hit, then I use my abilities. If I'm having to, like, if I don't have regen, instead of this happening, their health's going to do this. And then I have to use my skills, and then the real damage comes, and I don't have them. Uh, but yeah, it's, it, it is a, a real thing. And there's, uh, for those DPS that maybe have never realized it, there are many bosses in the game that just have a, a, a damage field hitting the whole room to keep the healers from getting bored. And so the healers are dealing with that the whole time. Without regen, it's much more difficult. Um, they just, they just constantly pulse damage to the whole area. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. on Kadeem 1, for example, the Kiter loves the healers regen. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a constant thing. But yeah, if, you, uh, if you're if you running like meters, like for example, uh, uh, let me swap, swap over the game, like like this guy right here. If you're running meters where you can keep track of uh, like how much healing you get from each source, uh, like th there's a there's a plugin for Arc DPS that can do it. Or there used to be. I don't know if this still is. I haven't used it in over a year. But you can see the breakdown and uh, it's usually over 50% of the, the healing done is regen. It's, uh, it's absolutely huge. Yeah, regen and prot. Like, I don't, I would not want to play a support that doesn't have regen and prot. They're so big. Like, prot reduces incoming damage by 30%, and then the regen is just constant, let me patch you up. And then the, uh, also, keep in mind, it's a boon. That, that sounds stupid, but stay with me here. Uh, Whisper of Dromag. Whole group is getting wailed on, and then he teleports you all into separate rooms. For the next 60 seconds, I'm still with you in spirit. I'm still healing you, even though you got teleported to another room, because I've got regen on you for 60 seconds. Like, if you get split up, you get spread out, you get you know, you know get hit by something you shouldn't have, and you get knocked across the room, I'm still patching you up 
because I had regen stacked on you. Like it, it's uh, it's it's just it's so wild. It's it's so incredibly good. Um, okay, so that is the end of this broadcast. Now they were also over on the Lightbringers podcast, which is uh, another ninety minutes. I'm going to decline to watch that just because of the time, and uh, I just spent two hours on this other thing. But if you're watching this later on YouTube, you know, you know what I will do? I will link the uh, Lightbringers podcast in both chats, and I will also put it under uh, the, video, you know, the video that this will become on YouTube in a pinned comment for anyone who is interested in seeing that. And additionally, here is the... Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? One sec. Here is the links to the original video that we just watched. And I've got two more links for you guys. Just a moment here. Uh, right here. This is the patch notes that they posted on the forums. And the last link is coming. These are the patch notes that were then translated on to the wiki, which include the tooltips. Should be the same info. Occasionally they miss, they slip up, which is why I'm providing both. So those are all the relevant links. There's four links there for today's stuff. But yeah, as a ranger support, uh, you know, enjoyer, um, what am I looking forward to here? I'll have to try out new hammer. I don't really, I haven't really liked a hammer on at any point, so I'll have to see if I like this. I don't like this, but I understand. It's fair. Um, I don't like this because they've been so, like, the, these two, they freaking reworked these like four times in the last couple of years. Uh, this is getting nerfed a bit. I think it will still be useful, but it is going to be a little bit less strong. Um, what else we got? Uh, ne Necro support in World v. World is definitely going to suffer a bit. It's not a role I have played, so I don't really have anything more to say than that other than... Ugh. Uh, I might have to try Staff Warrior support again and feel and see if I find it fun. The forbidden F word. I tried Staff Warrior support during its beta, and the number one complaint I had was using Staff 3 felt awful. Because it was like, target an enemy, target an ally, target an enemy, target an ally, target an enemy. And it was it was tedious. It, it was not fun. So after a couple hours, I just wanted to stop. Um, I might have to try it again. Uh, so, and just see if I enjoy it. And maybe I won't, I don't know. Like I do, for example, I very much enjoy those buttons where you can just save some people. Glyph of the Stars can do that every 48 seconds. You know, um, war for Warrior, the only skill like that is the Banner, which is like a two or three minute cooldown, much longer cooldown. But uh, I have to try and see. It might be, it might be fun to have one in my uh, repertoire and see how it is. Uh, how is Deadeye as a new player? It is very good at what it does, which is murder. Uh, so it, it really, it, it's not a matter of, is it good? It's just a matter of, is it the play style that you enjoy? Um, <laughs> and then what else was there? Uh, the change on med kit, uh, where med blaster can now target allies. That's awesome. Increased angle. I don't know how much they're increasing the angle. Like if it's just going from this to this, it might not even be noticeable. But if it's going from this to like 180, it might be great. I don't know, but uh, eager to try that out and see how that is. Bandage blast has been weird. So like when they said they were reworking it and they described what they were doing, I loved the sound of it. But then when they did it, I was like, this is weird and buggy. Like, it's, I can't get it to consistently work, which obviously they're trying to address that. So we'll see if it's better after that. Um, got some changes to rifle and PvP. Uh, buffs to rifle. I uh, have to see if that feels any better. And then, uh, man, I was using mecha legs in some of my builds. That makes me sound that like that's going to be gone. Uh, bunker down, automated medical response, uh, some of these getting completely reworked, so curious to see if they're going to be good. And I honestly don't play hollow much because yeah, I, I play support NG usually, so not sure how the hollow is going to be. We'll let other people test that out. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. I think that's everything. Okay, well, uh, that is the end of that section. If you missed anything, rewind the stream. <laughs>